it's it's a new year, it's a new month, it's a new episode, and it's a great episode because we're very excited about January. This is Between Nerds. I am your host, Aldo Mendez, and my co-host, Drew Elias. We are here with a special guest. You want to introduce yourself, buddy? Uh, sure. My name is Jacob Mendeville. I'm also a friend of these two nerds. So, the, Jacob is one of the earliest progenitors of the podcast. He's one of the... For, for There was a good couple months where he was the only fan of Between Nerds podcast. And not fan, but friend. Because he wasn't listening because he's, he's not a well-known nerd. He's not... He doesn't know about anime. You know, he might be a motorcycle nerd. He might be a, a motocross nerd. He's a cars nerd, but he's, he's an extreme nerd. You know, he's a yeah export <laughs> nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he listened to it because we put out a project and he wanted to give us feedback on on what we're doing and what we're not doing. So here he is. We asked him for a favor. He watched twenty four episodes. Twenty four episodes of Fire Force. Uh, yeah, Fire Force two thousand nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, did you like it? Uh, yeah, okay, so we're starting off with that. Um, mm-hmm. So this is my first anime to watch from the beginning to end. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would watch somebody, whoever was watching TV, I would jump in and see a little bit of an episode, but I never really seen a full anime. So it was a lot to take in, but I did like it. I definitely liked it. Cool. Do you feel like you could follow the format? Because, like, Japanese anime writing isn't the same as, like, watching, like, a CW uh, superhero show or, or something. Or a Netflix like that. show. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Like, even, like, the way they treat their story acts and arcs is different. So, I don't know if I could keep watching different animes, mm-hmm. but specific animes, yeah, I would have to... I don't know. It, it would be hard for me to get into a bunch of them, mm-hmm. but I'll give more a shot. Now, from watching this one, I'll definitely give some more to, a time to, to watch all of them. Well, the main reason we picked Fire Force is because you are a local fire nerd. Uh, you you are a superhero against uh, uh, fires. <laughs> yeah, well, that's correct. <laughs> I, I'm a... A professional paid firefighter. Um, I don't know about a hero, but I definitely do that for a living. So right, and um, a, but like a big part of what we've been trying to do uh, as a podcast is, and we say this every episode, we are trying to give back to the community. So unrelated to what you're doing as a local fire nerd, we are going to be donating this month, the month of January, to the El Paso Fire Department. So it'll be the same format as always. Please use uh, the hashtag on Twitter or Instagram, hashtag EPFireNerds. And for every original tweet using said hashtag, you will be entered into our January giveaway. And for every like, retweet, or I don't know, like picture on Instagram, use it on a that uses said hashtag, we will be donating a dollar to the El Paso Fire Department. Uh, I don't think we tallied up last month's donation, did we? Uh, I just I just looked it over, and I, I get nerds. Um, we're kind of disappointed because we know we have more than 10 followers. And, I mean, you guys aren't using these donations, and you're not going to discourage us for stopping these donations because we're going to keep doing them because I think that's one big part of the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, but, I mean, hopefully with this with this new one, hopefully Jacob can get us a little more exposure and so we can make a big contribution to, to the department, you know? Yep, I agree. And um, am I missing anything up front? Uh, in, do we want to plug anything up front? If you, if you have any questions... Uh, that you want us to correlate to Mr. Jacob Mendeville over here, please hit us up on Twitter. That is at Between Nerds. Mm-hmm. Give us uh, questions, comments, or concerns to the email, Between Nerds Podcast at gmail.com, Instagram, Between Nerds. I am Drew Elias. I am Aldo Mendez. You, all these vibes. All these vibes, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just email us at uh, Between Nerds Podcast at, uh, at gmail.com. Mm hmm. And I think we're ready to start. So, Jacob, um, you want to ask him the question we always ask each other? I don't know. In, in, in big terms, I don't need a whole lot of detail, but like in big, in big overarching viewpoints, what is Fire Force? I would say a very, very animated version of the fire department 
itself. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, very animated. Mm-hmm. For, obviously, it's an animation, but I mean, like... So it's over- a documentary. <laughs> it's a true documentary. That's exactly, everything's right. It's reality uh, television uh, animated. Yeah. And, and that's where I was following. I mean, do you wear sandals to work? Do you wear sandals? Do you have any fire, fire, fire powers, first of all? Are you a third generation yeah. or a second I'm generation? I'm a first gen, so oh, I have okay. no powers <laughs> at all. Hey, hey, the captain's powerless, so... Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's the strongest one. He's the strongest one, so... You know, second of all, how many hot girls are there getting naked all the time at the fire force? I mean, at the fire department. None. <laughs> None officially. None officially. Is, is there anybody with a with a lucky lecher lure just like falling apart while while trying to cook or something like that? There's definitely <laughs> some good cooks and bad cooks. That's for sure. That that's and, a and that's a real thing. We're okay. So you're not um, used to anime. Me and yeah. Alder are like desensitized to this shit at this point. But my question to you is like, did like the fan service turn you off? Was it like really weird and awkward for you to watch? Kind of. So I knew that's a part of the anime culture, right? But it it was. Strange because it just came out of nowhere on this and anime, no I guess. For it. Right, right. It was like perfect, awesome scene, perfect talking and everything, and then tits. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm not hating on it, but it was just, oh, uh, I off-putting. guess. Like, I guess. It's off putting yeah. at the beginning. You would love Domestic Girlfriend. Domestic Girlfriend <laughs> is the best it's, anime without it's any It's strange, answers. but I could work around it, and at the same time, like, it's not horrible it's just kind of strange I, I was trying to explain it to Karen the other day the 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 concept of fan service so she's like what so you're like being rewarded for watching it by seeing like cartoon like tits or something <laughs> like and that's fan service and right that, that's fan service like thank you for watching here some animated moves <laughs> okay so then who's best girl uh, you guys explain to me best girl that means like top who's your top who's your top female um, character in the show I'm gonna say Ah, I forgot her name. She's part of the fire uh, fire company eight. She has black hair. The buff one. The, the buff one. The buff yeah. one. Maki. Maki. Yeah. Maki. I believe I can agree with that. I like Maki. Maki. I think Maki's the most popular one on like anime Twitter too. It's because like. she's more useful than Tamaki. Tamaki. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I, I like um, Tamaki's yeah, character like, design a lot. Yeah. You but do, but, you but you um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate the writing around her though, because it fe- like a lot of Fire Force. Like it's good. It's entertainment. It's like mm-hmm. low B, high C. Like. It's it's something I can put on the background, but like, it's it's it, it doesn't want you to look into it because like a lot of like the writing or the directing feels really lazy because mm-hmm. it'll be an episode about absolutely nothing. It's just like oh, Tamaki's naked. Mm-hmm. You be distracted. And not anything, but it's a lot of like. Uh, I guess arcing because I mean we have like what four or five main fights throughout this 25 episodes which kind of arc into themselves the pacing's so, weird yeah the pacing's a little weird so yeah and, and, and I and I get you because because her character design especially when she has her fire around her and she's using her fire powers is the most eye-catching like I, fighty scenes but it, she doesn't end up doing anything absolutely nothing and I was um Karen was watching it with me, and, like, I just kept joking. Every time there's a scene with her, she's in, like, a fire department outfit and, like, the fire retardant coat. And But, like, her tits are just out. Like, she's just wearing, like, just a bikini top. Like, like no use for the fire, no, no for the jacket. Yeah, she's not protected in any way. It's just, like, I, I got to have my boobs out while I'm fighting a fire. You know That's what I mean? That's a proper way to wear the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I think, uh, before I forget... Uh, the the author of Fire Force, the manga, is Otsushi Okubo. And I wanted to bring him up because in two weeks we are watching probably his more popular work, which is Soul Eater, which he wrote for about nine years. Mm-hmm. But what I was going over when going over Soul Eater episodes in preparation for this episode, Soul Eater is a lot of the same, but worse. Like mini arcs on mini arcs and mini arcs. Like the entirety of season one of Soul Eater is 51 episodes, but each arc is like three episodes. Okay. So the way we're going to have to watch in two weeks, we're going to have to watch like the first seven arcs. And like I was trying to decide on like a certain point where like is like a proper going. finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Fire Force, the pacing for season one is weird because like when I was watching it last year, it was it came out the summer 
and continued into the fall. So they took the regular like mid season break between the summer and fall. And when it came back in the fall, the it, it's like the the directing directions just completely different because it's like they forgot that they needed to like complete an entire like storyline. You know what I mean? Like episode fifteen starts, the song's different. I felt that exactly the same. Like I felt the story was a little different, and then they caught back on later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's like they forgot. It's like, oh shit, we gotta fight the white clan, and it's not about like just loving the fire force uh, company section eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I mean, start us off, Jacob. Why? How did you experience like you know the first episodes, and what you like about them? Paint me okay. a word picture. What's the world like? So wait, wait, on the anime? Yeah, what's the world like? So first off, the first couple scenes, first minute. I just thought to myself, what the hell is happening? Never watched an anime. Too much things happening at once. Um, characters are getting introduced. So then it introduced the main character. And they introduced him as the devil. They uh-huh. first teach him as devil. So What's his name? The, uh, Shinra. 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 So devil Foot. The I, devil's I just, fat, or devil prince or devil, devil something. Devil foot. Yeah. Devil foot. Yeah. But they, they... Everything's happening. So I'm taking it all in. I mean, the animation itself is very cool. I really liked it. A lot and of good animation for sure. We found Quality. out the the JoJo's animators are the ones responsible for. Oh yeah, uh, it was, the anime was produced by David Production, and we fucking love David Production because like we fucking love JoJo's, yeah, like, yeah, especially yeah. Part Five. And uh, fuck, I keep getting sidetracked, but it's because I don't want to forget it later. Because uh, so basically, the point of Fire Force is like we live in the society where people just spontaneously combust and turn into fire demons and it's up to a specialized uh, fire force of the fire department that's like fire soldiers to put them out and they all have fire-esque powers and their bodies are used to fire so that's why they don't get burned up by said fire but the point I'm trying to bring up is fire force directly steals like two Jojo powers and like the whole time I kept thinking of that I'm just like wow that's so just because Mm -hmm. For example, uh, we were talking about second generation and third generation firepowers. The second generation pyro, not kinetics, the pyro... Kinetics? Yeah, so second generation can't generate their own fire, but they manipulate fire. fire. Yeah, and then third generations can create their own fire. There's a second generation uh, fire pyrokinetic, the lieutenant, who has... uh, the the dude with the gun in part five of JoJo's, what's mm-hmm. his name? The lieutenant, lieutenant, uh, Himawa? Himana, Himanawa? Yeah, but what's the JoJo character's name? Oh, um... Mika, or... Uh, the uh, six Mi- bullets. Mista. 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 He has Mista. Mista's exact power. So, like, you'll see this a lot more that, like, even though an anime came out, like, around the same time, if the manga came out, like, 20 years before, it's clear that, like, they're stealing certain things. I'm, 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 audience, I'm speaking to Jacob directly right now. And um, so Mista's power is he can control the direction of bullets because he's got, like, little force ghosts that can just, like, kick it in certain directions. And that's literally the lieutenant's power. Yeah, be, but in, 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 in a way, because the lieutenant's power is kind of to either suppress or intensify the explosion within the bullet he, casing. He can change direction, too, though. Oh, like, really? Once it's in motion, when they're fighting Company 7, uh-huh. they're, when, like, he sees it behind a corner. Oh, he ricochets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's Mista's yeah, 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 power. Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, the final villain is uh, Shoto's brother. No. Show? Show. Yeah, so, yeah. So what? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the world. Uh huh, it's the world. It, it, and, um,. Fuck, I'm getting so far ahead, but I show is my favorite p- character just because I love his power so fucking much. Mm-hmm. Because my favorite chemistry, like general chemistry concept, not organic chemistry, because fuck organic chemistry. My favorite gen can, gen concept is the idea of like entropy and stuff like that. Like the expansion of the universe. Time only exists because the universe is always expanding. The center of the universe is always giving off energy, and that's why we see. Uh, the flow of time across like spa- the space continuum, correct? Mm-hmm. So, like, obviously, no one can generate enough heat to like suppress it's like the, the big entire, bang. Yeah, you, yeah. you need like the power of the universe to yeah, be yeah. able to. So, show's power is he can absorb so much energy around him that t- that time is no longer expanding. So he's just in a stopgap universe, mm-hmm. and he's the only one moving within this dimension, as he calls it, almost, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, Dio's power from part three Jojo the world which is just to stop time and just punch people in the face while it's time stop mm-hmm. 
and uh, yeah, so and then on this world, in this world, um, is very steampunky. It's it's again, it's Neo Tokyo, is New Tokyo. Old Tokyo died a long time they, ago. They keep saying Neo Tokyo, mm -hmm. like, and that's the thing in the anime too. Just like, and I think it's because of the bombings. Yeah, yeah, it has to be correlated to that. Yeah, you know, there, like, it, there's in a lot of anime, it's implied that like there was a giant, massive explosion one day, and Old Tokyo is dead, and now there's Neo Tokyo, which is like kind of stealing from. Uh, well, it's not stealing, but a lot of writing comes from World War Two, Japan getting their shit rocked and after this <laughs> and, uh, uh, twice and after this world starts uh, developing uh, we know that it works out of like this main power plant and like I said every everything looks steampunky like all the the architect looks very steampunky itself not even not even the characters just like the world itself mm -hmm. and then you said Jacob we meet our uh, we meet the devil we meet Mr. Shinra and then we meet the rest of company A right yeah, so it, the first episode is just showing all this stuff, and then Shinra goes to Company 8 and says that he's the new recruit, mm -hmm. so he's the noob. Correct. He's the first freshie, and then they're just trying to get to know him. And one thing was pretty cool to see. Um, do fire hurt? I guess. Do fire nerds haze people? Yeah, so that's where I was <laughs> So, no, no, there's no hazing. <laughs> there's no hazing, man. It's called... Uh, learning somebody <laughs> but uh one of them was really cool at the beginning where he introduced himself he has that weird smile and his smile is uh, a nerve nervous tick mm -hmm. and he makes a weird devil smile and then mm -hmm. the captain or the lieutenant one of the two they realize it so they start pushing him they start talking shit to him, on him and they start picking on him so i thought it was really cool that I don't know, they push him to a point to be like, who is this guy? Like, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let me make fun of him yeah, real quick. Yeah, because they're looking like at his follow, right? Yeah. And they're like, what, what What kind of dumbass grin is this? Yeah. They tell him. He's like, oh, no, it's uh, it's just a nervous stick that happens when I'm nervous. And then, like, the captain gets all up on his face and he's like, hmm, hmm, until he finally cracks and he's like, Gee. yeah, and so that's definitely uh, something that you would see happening. Something that I would see <laughs> happening for sure. It's very light hazing. So yeah. I, I guess it's acceptable. Nobody laid hands on him. Yeah, nobody laid hands on him. <laughs> yeah, and then um, Why are another you cool thing. Because nobody laid hands on him. Well, one of the other cool things was when um, they took off because they got a call and they named their truck. The truck's name Matchbox. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. So it has like a little name to it. That's that's funny. It's cool. Do you, that's funny. Your do you, do you give your trucks up? Um, babe? So not the trucks, but the stations kind of have like nicknames. The little nicknames. Like Beast from the East kind of little Okay, quirks, okay. Like, that's not as cool as Matchbox. It's but... definitely not as cool as Matchbox. <laughs> the Beast from the East. There's a lot of different mm -hmm. station yeah. names. And I wanted to say that in this world, there is a regular fire department in this world, but because of what's been going on with certain humans just in, uh, like uh, spontaneously combusting or lighting on fire and becoming, I think that's the best way you would describe it, like uh, fire zombies. Yeah. Uh, because they just start lighting shit on fire because they're, they're on fire and they get shit on fire. So they made this fire force that only... Uh, uh, focuses on these accidents. Fire, Fire Force has uh, one of those themes that we've talked about previously. The Catholic Church plays like a big part in it. Even though it's not called the Catholic Church in Fire Force, it's the Church of Soul. But it's super like Catholic nuns, like Catholic, Catholic popes. cathedrals, popes. They pray before they kill anybody and it's a super like Roman Gothic prayer. And a lot of the imagery looks like fucking Bloodborne. Like the the intro in the second half where they're talking about um, the first raffle guy that started the religion. He it, it looks like. Have you ever played Bloodborne or Dark Souls? No, I know I know what game you're talking about. But I don't know the 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 one like cutscene in the original Dark Souls reminds me of like that second half of Fire Force's beginning, and. Um, well, by the end of episode one, we see what the enemy is really about, right? Right. So they see the infernos, right? That's what they call infernal. Them. Infernal. Mm -hmm. When the people turn into flames and they put them to sleep or kill them off, whatever. But it's only for, I guess, the fire force, fire soldiers to see, and not the public, because they're inside the buildings usually. When the for an old infernal, mm -hmm. yeah. So then it ends about right there, and it explains pretty much what the company's about or what the fire force is about uh -huh. right section eight is trying to find like the reason for 
uh, spontaneous combustion, right? Yeah, and then also, I, when I was watching it, I was like, what? I want a gun to fight fire. That sounds fun. <laughs> but, yep. And uh, we start seeing, in, in later episodes, like, first, first uh, uh, like, ten episodes, it's a lot of exposition and trying to get you into watching the anime. So they're not really uh, putting a lot of arcing in the first like few episodes, mm-hmm. so and, and I think that's the issue with the with the pacing of the of season one as a whole. Because I like you like the beginning, you know what I mean. Like you as a watcher, the, all the first five episodes being kind of connected, like helps you get into it. Mm-hmm. But it's just the ending is just so rushed because they just took their sweet time in the first half. Mm-hmm. And uh, where I was going is that we start finding out that because the uh, because how connected or like the non-existent separation between church and state in the, in this world it's uh that uh the you see that the weapons are being blessed like to kill the fire zombies because they want to put them to rest like adequately or by their means you know ethically ethically yeah. there you go and and yeah we start seeing that that the captain uh what's his name captain uh, big dude the ape yeah big dude the <laughs> ape um, he's very like interested on in helping people, and we start seeing some little flashbacks that 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 show us that other fire for uh fire force companies are like dicks about it. You know, they start being like, "Oh, we need to kill this fool. It doesn't even matter." Or blah blah. Even even in the first episode, just like, "Hey, hide your weapons, hide your weapons." And he even puts the new recruiters inside. And Obi, just, uh, Obi, Captain Obi, um. We see that he puts the two recruits aside. He's like, "Hey, I told you to fucking hide your weapons. Like, why are you not hiding weapons? Like, it's like that's not for it's not for us. It's for the people around us, so they don't see that we're actually killing their loved ones. You know, because this inferno, it's either someone's mom, someone's someone's the you know? brother that's on fire mm-hmm. that just had to be put down. And the thing about uh, Fire Force Section Eight is they're um, the only ethical section we meet, basically, because what Captain Obi tells Shinra in the beginning is that like. Hey, everyone else is tied to what you were saying. Like, it's both the church is involved with a public work sector, like the fire work force and like section one and section like six are like super tied to the church. But then some are way too tied to like big industry, like section like seven was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, section seven was the recruited one, the one that didn't listen to the church. Well, yeah, 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 but originally that's how Captain Obi yeah, explained yeah, it. it. Was yeah, like yeah. they're way too tied to industry, and that shows. Um, it's like a little bit of like a political statement, like on the down low there, because what it's trying to tell you is number one, the separation of church and state, like you were saying, but number two, it's kind of shitting on like cons- the conservative argument that like public work should not be run by the government and should be entirely tied to the private sector. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. You don't think so? Oh, to the private sector as a state. Right. So, like, there's the argument that, like, the, the post office, for example, mm-hmm. is a public works project, right? Mm-hmm. And it's funded by our tax dollars. But the argument there is that because um, the public sector, like the government, cannot run an industry properly, we should sell it to a private interest oh, to better no, run it. no, 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 no. That's kind of the argument there is that, like, Fire Force, like... The best company that we follow is compi- is entirely devoted to public service. Mm-hmm. It's it not tied to anything else. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, we 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 start seeing the main story about our main character. What is the story? Do we know about his backstory now? Well- Basically, where it goes from there is we're just trying to tackle each, like, uh, other section of the Fire Force, right? So, first, we're attacking Company 7. I believe so, yeah. The first one's 7. With uh, Princess Hinaba? Yes. Uh, I wanted to mention, though, that before Wait, this... Isn't Princess 5? Hibana? Yeah, that's Station that's five? 5. Okay. Oh, that's Section 5? Oh, okay. Section, Section five. 5, Station 5. I'm pretty sure, because if you took notes, we haven't taken I, notes, I like, did, crazy dude. in a while. Oh, it is Section 5. Yeah, right. it's, it's my, it's bad, five. my bad, my bad. Captain 5. But uh, what I wanted to uh, point out is that our main character, Shinra, that we haven't really talked about, uh, Devil, uh, the Devil's footprint or Devil's feet or something like that, that's what they call him, because he is a third generation uh, pyrokinetic, which mm-hmm. means that he can somehow control and create fire. But this guy, it's funny because he wears his entire firefighter look like uh, uniform, but he doesn't wear any shoes. Yeah, because he just has fire coming from his feet. Yeah, he has like jets coming out of his feet. And uh, he wanted to be in the fire force because he lost his family, his brother, in, in, in a fire in a fire accident. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. right. 
So his whole goal for like becoming a fire force person is to figure out what really happened that day and how his mom and his brother died. Mm-hmm. Which is like a super like anime concept. It's like I was four years old and made a promise to always protect my brother to my mom, and now it's up to me to like. Do you know anybody like that in the fire department? That has a kid brother that he's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, but uh, I don't. But, but I know there's a bunch of guys that always wanted to be a firefighter as a kid, uh-huh. and now they are. Oh, cool, cool. cool. But yeah, I don't know about. Uh, <laughs> I was, I, and I just went. I thought I stopped there because I was gonna say, ah, uh-huh, let's see where you go. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But um, another thing, when you were brought up uh, the Station Five, Captain Five, from there, um, and the companies already, I guess, hated each other because they showed up on scene Mm -hmm. and they're like oh no i hate this company and not necessarily that that they companies hate each other but there is beef between other companies why would there be beef between companies i guess not not like i hate you but like i'm trying to do this first like i'm trying to get there before you how dare you put out that fire yeah (laughs) it's kind of like that exactly (laughs) get out here first Uh, (laughs) yeah but uh but Basically, uh, Section 5's goal is to capture, capture like, infernals that are, um, that still have a consciousness. Yeah, because we see that different infernals have, it, it reminds me almost like Attack on Titan with the different acting, uh, titans. Mm-hmm. Like, you have, like, the ones that are predictable, and then you have the ones that are fucking just everywhere and going everywhere, and that's, and that's how our infernals work. We have some that go rogue and start fucking shit up, and there's some that just stay, Still in the same place that they lit up. Yeah, so, uh, we, well, I don't even remember, like, why, uh, it compelled Section 8 to go after Section 5 like that. So they captured an Infernal, and then, like, Section 5 was gonna run experiments on him, but Section 8 was like, no, that's unethical, we have to kill him, so we're gonna just break into a different section. I, I, I believe, what was five it? 5 went. Over there, but it was still eight's fire, like uh, section eight's fire, right? But since um, station that five, captain wasn't whatever, there yet. no, no, since section five is so into um, infernals that are still conscious, they heard about it and they went over there. Uh-huh. I think that's what happened. But then, what would compel section eight to attack section five afterwards? Uh, I they think... got beef, man. Uh, just just like they crossed me once, I'm gonna break in and just start busting heads. Like, yeah, like that's so mean. <laughs> I think nobody sent them. Didn't Shinra just go on himself and like it, it was it was it the... was the nun first. The, oh, the that's si- right. The sister went to oh. go talk to Princess Hinaba, and she's like, "Yo, you got to put that infernal to rest." But that was that wasn't the case. The case was the uh, it wasn't an attack. It was the the sister. I forgot it was the sister. The sister went because she knew her for when she went to nun the school. convent. Yeah. The coven, yes. Yeah. That's what nun school is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she's even like, Princess Ivana's like, what do you, I, I can't, I, I, what, how dare you come here by yourself trying to take me on or something, something. And she's like, no, nah, I'm not even here for that. I just want, you need to put that guy to rest or something, something, something. And that's when she gets her naked, like almost naked and blasts her clothes <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. And, and Shinra <laughs> had like a vision or something. That oh. that he's like what the nuns over here I should go help her or some shit like that. oh because he has uh what do they call it is that the Adola link Adola burst like, Adola link yeah but yeah. he doesn't know it yet he doesn't he's know just it confused yet. like it was like a deja vu kind he, of he gets situation. fucking force powers through fire yeah that, I think that's a little bit of my issue with fire force like the power systems all over the place bro like if you I it got <laughs> agreed agreed it, it was hard for me to grasp it at the beginning too but I'm like okay in the in the entire knowledge of the fire element, who the fuck knows like how this is possible, you know? But fire is just molten gas. No, I know, <laughs> but like it's like it's like the force in fucking Star Wars. They treat it like that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like so it's like an element, like it's a thing. It's like air, like airbender almost. It, it, ta- it takes up mass depending on the person. Like mm-hmm. depending on the fire, like the fire can literally take up mass and they can grab things with it. Like. <laughs> And that's what's so weird about it. So anyways, anyways, anyways. So Section 8 busts in there to, like, rescue the princess. The lieutenant's just whole ass just shooting fucking people. Mm-hmm. And, uh... What's her power again? The, the captain? captain? The cap- no, Princess Ivana? 
Yeah, the captain. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's it's like, captain. It's like um, heat signal piece. So it's like she puts so much heat on them, so it passes them out. Oh, that's right. That's, that's true. That's why she makes that tree-looking thing. Yeah, it's just intense heat, so everybody just gets fatigued. That's okay. what it was. Heat strokes. What I understand, it's much. more like how I was just describing that fire is just molten gas. Because there's that point where there's a flashback when they're kids, and she's dumping dumping like different metals on it to change like her fires petals color Mm -hmm. right so her represent her fire power even though it's just fire like shouldn't everyone just be shooting fire at each other it's just her manipulating the the design of it yeah Yeah. it's her manipulating what gas to like light on fire in that moment i don't know i don't fucking know she makes a she makes a cherry blossom tree out of fire and it and the petals burn people that's that's her power yep (laughs) and yeah we see the fights and fucking shinra starts he just believes in himself and has so an hard, anime yeah. moment and yeah. just punches Princess Hibana in the face. And then she's in love with him because he gave her a black eye. Yeah. Yeah, very dark. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, she's just in love with him. I, I don't like anime like that because it's clear. It's again clear what the author is doing. It's it's like a form of fan service in itself because it's telling like... The, the guys are like, yeah, I should hit women. You not, know what I'm not saying? Not that they should hit women, but that like... Uh, eventually, if you are self-proclaimed righteous and a uh, air quotes good guy, then like all women around you are just gonna fall madly in love with you, <laughs> <laughs> and that's like how every female character is treated in this anime. Like yeah. at a certain point, he's just doing his job and does his hero monologue, and every woman's just like, "Oh, Shinra, I love you uh-huh. so much." But yeah, they they so they went to get the information that they had. Right, mm. because at this point, Princess Ivana doesn't have anything, and she just has the information that she's acquired for like the scientists that she's been working with and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they discover that uh, not bugs, all, yeah, that, that like certain infernals like are their their anatomy, their fucking infernal anatomy doesn't match up. So she's like, it's clear that there's these little itty bitty bug beetles that are turning people into infernals. Yeah, so there's a scene in one of them where. Somebody from the street, it doesn't identify them at that point, but they have a bug in a vial and they push it against somebody and the bug goes in them and then they turn into an infernal. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that was pretty interesting how they make it a bug, but there's a little thing that I guess people that start fires call them a fire bug. Oh, so that was pretty cool. I was like, I don't know how, if they're trying to do that, but I'm just putting out there like, if we notice a pattern, like more, mostly the investigation side, but when there's constant fires, like within that week, and they're all trash cans, like, oh, we got a fire bug now. Like somebody's uh, oh, putting on fire. That. So that's, that's cool. That's cool little. That's thing cool. Of that's shit, cool. Okay. okay. And you know what? A lot of like animes will go the extra mile just to name something, something like in another language that it, that means like something within the anime that too, like, uh, like all the like talon shit mm-hmm. they say is like they're a man you know yeah. so it's like it's pretty weird so where are we uh so uh princess hibana and section five are now we're gonna work with section eight and that's kind of how it's gonna go like we're gonna we're gonna go from second to section we're either gonna beat up a section and they're our enemy forever or we're gonna beat them up and they're gonna be like our allies now mm-hmm. until we can find like the reason for human combustion yeah and then around there the character gets introduced. The the Joker mm-hmm. gets introduced to uh, Shinra. Oh yeah, or vice versa. That Shinra guy. gets introduced to him, but mm-hmm. it's just like a weird character, and I still don't know what his angle is because at first it shows that he's kind of a bad person. They don't explain. And then as you go more and more, it kind of feels like he's helping him, mm-hmm. kind of show a bigger picture. But it's just a weird character that has a lot of power. It shows that he has a lot of power and. He's just kind of enticing Shinra to look further into the mystery of this. Of his family. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, your brother might be alive. Yeah. 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 I'll give you some information. Yeah, because what does he do? He he has the same sciences that Hibana was working with, made him some special ash that he can control around the room and then just blow it up. Yeah, and then that same scientist ends up working for Section Eight, and us as an audience, like we're just like, oh, we know just that us. guy. We know that guy was <laughs> yeah. with Joker <laughs> all the time. So yeah, that's and that's what I. I mean, that's what yeah, we're we still don't get that payoff in season one. Uh, yeah, and uh, we still um, we're we're watching this twenty five episodes, and it's more like a recruit fucking movie 
until like the last five episodes. You know what I'm saying? Like the entire show re- revolves around getting the company stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's a fucking video game. Cause yeah, because <laughs> I think that we haven't even like introduced the entire company. So it's the devil, uh-huh. and then uh, Night King, Arthur, Arthur. That uh, he's they, a they, he's an idiot because he can control. He doesn't control fire. He controls plasma. Well, he makes the fire so hot he makes plasma. Oh, he makes yeah, plasma. but they also know uh, Shinra and him know each other from from the school, school, right? Yeah, from the, academy, academy, from the yeah. fire force. And they hate each other. And Arthur is such an airhead. He just thinks he's a knight all the time. Like what? I th- it reminds me of of that guy in uh, Konosuba. That guy with a spagic sword. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's just mm. big and stupid and tr- pretends to be knightly. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. a lot of little quirks in the show alone. Like, when both of those characters would get dumb, they would change the animation. Mm-hmm. Like, it would change very vague and just their eyes, like, confused. Just a dot. Yeah, yeah. just a dot. Like, oh, we messed up. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, was, that was cool to see, I guess. I never really seen those. But there was a lot of animation in there that would show a... An emotion, I guess. Like, grieve or scare. Yeah, but it, or... it would keep showing that. It would show that scene. Mm-hmm. So that already meant, like, they're confused or embarrassed. Or, or like, the one we were, t- cool. we were talking about this earlier. When you were, when we were talking about the ending, when they're inside the uh, uh, the ether, and the scientists are like, oh, but I'm so curious. And they put that weird-ass, like, almost fisheye look on his, on yeah. his face. That shit is weird, too. They do that to Shinra a lot, mm-hmm. just to, like... Uh, show how weird his fucking face is. His smile is. Yeah. When he's nervous. What company do we meet after that? Um, I think after that we meet like Station, Station, Station One. Station One. Station One. Station One. Station one oh, because they one. have the games. Oh, and that's where they meet Joker. Oh, right. That, yeah. So the competition. The, no, they, they, that was the second time he met Joker. Really? What the, was first the first time, time was in the street, I think, or in the house. Oh yeah, it that's in a house oh, or something. No, that's where Joker sees him. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. But, it, but I'm saying. Joker got introduced into the show. Oh, yeah, into the show. But this is the first time. Yeah, when they meet him. Yeah, we're at the, like, there's some firefighters. It's like the freshman fucking games or something. Games, yeah. And And you go ahead. We we think you're going to get a tournament arc, and that's where we meet, like, another third generation fire kinetic, um, Tamaki. Who's got like cat fire powers? Uh-huh. And that's my thing about like the fire powers. Like that's her power isn't really fire half the time. She never burns anybody. It's just her. She her fire air quotes can grab things. Yeah, I never really understood her power. You know what? Like, Remind so too much. It's it kind of off. You know what it remind me of? What? Like the entire sequence of uh, Cheetah and Wonder Woman in WW84. Like uh, she's just jumping around doing animal things and showing that she can do animal things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but she doesn't do anything. And and then she's got bad luck because she's got a lucky lecher lure, which is never explained. It's never explained. They just say, like, she has bad luck and, like, gets naked on accident. So that's because yeah, her lucky lecher like, lure. Yeah, trips over and then everybody's touching her titties out of nowhere. It's like, where the fuck did this come? Bro, I'm like, all right, I guess. <laughs> yeah, all right. Whoa! Yeah. And everybody's so sorry about it. Everybody's so, so sorry about it. <laughs> so Shinra busts into the building at the freshman games, and that's where he fights Joker. He gets his ass kicked, and then the building burns down, and he and Joker's like, watch out for section one or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then that's when Shinra recognizes the captain from section one, and he goes back to a flashback when he was a kid, and he's like, I think this is the captain... That saved me from the fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the the, the character design because it just reminds me of Metal Gear, like Big Boss. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, exactly what. It like, I just, you of. I just of love Captain Burns. Uh, Captain I, Burns. Captain Burns is the captain of, sec- of Section One. Yeah, 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 Captain Burns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just reminds me of like Big Boss Metal Gear character design, and I just with an eye patch. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, a, no. that's a thing. He has an eye patch. Too. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm seeing. Like, so, it's crazy. I like it. Um, so. What ends up happening is the the freshmen from Section 8 and Section 7, like, do, like, a covert ops mission for Section 1 for, like, a... They're going to train with the section, but, like, really figure out, like, why they're... Why that company's area is getting so many uh, infernals Mm -hmm. showing up. So, like, there's a pattern that somebody there is creating artificial infernals, which we know to be happening from Captain Hibana's research. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Eventually, we see one of the lieutenants is, like, doing these little bugs that Jacob was talking about and, like, putting in their necks. And, like, that's how he's making Infernals. Mm-hmm. So then it's up to... What's his name? The main dude? 
Shinra? Shinra, yeah, it's up to Shinra to confront the lieutenant. And that's like, the, honestly, that's my favorite fight scene. I, I can't yeah, I, I definitely put that on one of my notes. That that fight scene was awesome to see. That one, that one inside. The um, one inside with Joker? No, 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 no. The with one the that, captain. Oh, with the, the last star one. captain. Oh. With the star no, lieutenant. Not, not last one. Right the, after that is like the next episode or the something. The star like lieutenant. That. The Star Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, the one that was giving bugs to the little kids. Oh, yes, 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 What's yes. What's his name? Oh, he was Mar... Mar... I can't remember his name. That's when they went into... Yeah. To Station 1 to infiltrate, kind of, yeah. deal, right? Yeah, and that's... Um, when... Yeah, that got pretty dark at that scene. Well, he was just putting yeah. bugs on the little kids? Rekka. Yeah, like, Rekka, Rekka, yeah. Rekka. That was... Pretty, like, oh, oh I know what's happening. Yeah, Rekka. Yeah, cause, so, because Tamaki was so in love with, like... Her, like, her upper, like, superiors, like, the captain burns and, like, all three of the lieutenants for section one, she would just do whatever they say because she looked up to them. So when Rekka would be like, yo, go find me a bunch of little children so that I can, and bring them to this random ass warehouse so that I can protect them or save them. I don't know what, what language he used with her. And he just starts, like, lighting these kids and their mom on fire. Yeah, she had no idea. She was oblivious of what was happening until it started happening. happening. She's like, whoa, I messed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she just starts getting beaten to the ground by Rekka. Like, just like. And then at that point. How did Shinra get involved? Did he have another like uh, connection with something? He they, he was taught. Him and Arthur were talking to the other lieutenant of Section One mm-hmm. that per, that assumed it was Rekka. That no, no, okay, I remember. He um, he was snooping in Rekka's room, and then the other I don't know his rank, whatever. They caught him, and he's like, "It's not me. It's Rekka. He might be here." Blah blah blah. And that's when they right. ended up going. Okay. But they said, "Go." Fly over there and we'll run over there. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it was. And, and then honestly, that's my favorite like fight scene. This whole thing because like Shinra just busts through the roof like and just just kicks him like square in the jaw and oh, it's just like I, boom. Dude, like when I saw that because it, it like it almost reminds me of. I don't know, like drops in a house song music that, like, <laughs> that's the, bass, the yeah. bass of it. Yeah, yeah. like he, for sure, he just flies in. Like it's that a fucking wh- dubstep drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like it's just like the sequence of him flying, noticing what he's doing, and just coming into the through the roof and like kicking him in into the floor. Like that was. Crazy. I think at that scene alone, it really showed us. As well, show, like watching the show, how strong Shinra can be and is at that moment. Like mm-hmm. he's he's still learning his powers. It's pretty cool. Because Rekka is a third generation himself, but his is like super basic. Like he just gets like fire coming out of his fist. Like he's just gonna yeah, like, he's all he's blowing. gonna fire punch you to death. Mm-hmm. Like and, and, and so he just was just beating the shit out of Tamaki, and she's just crying because she just wanted to defend herself against this dude that she looked up to. And it's and there's just like oh and this she's is like getting a, her ass beat too. yeah he starts Ooh. and there's an inappropriate amount of fans it was here. it was a but as the same time as her getting beaten too like that was an appropriate amount of beating a woman no but I agree <laughs> but like it okay was gnarly. I was like oh no this isn't gonna stop I I can understand from like a narrative standpoint what it's trying to say but like to sexualize her as she's getting Being beaten, beaten? Yeah. I was like whoa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. That was um uh with Goblin Slayer when it came out maybe last year. It might have been last year or two years ago. It's this anime. Just uh, it's it had the very first episode got a lot of bad controversy because a character, a female dungeon crawler character, gets raped by a gang of goblins. Mm-hmm. But in the manga, it doesn't sexualize the raping. The anime director... So it just got weirder in se- the actual yeah, it, animation? Yeah, it, it sexualized it and gave, like, fan service as she was being raped. And this isn't that bad, but, like, she's getting abused pretty badly, and the anime still goes out of its way to try to sexualize her in that instance. Like, we see Berserk. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't get that crazy. It doesn't because at the end, the only that like like demon rape you see, it's like through his eye, and then that's where the anime ends. Yeah, like that's when ninety seven ends. And then we saw the movie that gets a little bit too crazy, but it doesn't sexualize it. It's just literally her being like demon fucked. Yeah, you know. It's we've crazy. seen some weird anime. <laughs> 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 Dude, I haven't listened to you guys in a while. What are you guys watching now, some, man? That was a Lloyd suggestion. <laughs> oh, That's well, Lloyd's that favorite bad. anime, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. anyways, so. Sounds like a so fun Jacob, podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
one other thing after that scene, um, I think things come down and that I keep forgetting her name. The the one that got beat up, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. She's like, "Can I chill with you guys? Tomiki. I know I'm part of uh, this station. I'm in trouble, but let me hang out with you guys to be safe." So they're already in the house. And every episode, it, it kind of makes a couple days pass or weeks pass. So they're in the station at, at Section 8. And something with the captain, I don't know what he's doing, but he's going through his locker. And it's all messed up. And that's that's another thing that, not necessarily lockers, but little jokes like that. It's like, who the hell messed up this shit? And then everybody kind of stays quiet. Oh, <laughs> so that was, that was a good little, little thing that he put uh, in. Yeah, because yeah, we see that after this fight. It's and firefighter slice of life. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was it was very little things like that that they put in for sure. That was, I noticed. Maybe you guys know yeah. oh, it's just a show, but I definitely yeah, noticed I stuff like that. With uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just thought they were fucking with them. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we see, so like what I said, like now this is like our new recruit to our, our good hearted. Hold, hold on, the white cloud is introduced there. Yeah, and, no. no, no, it's a little bit after that. No, 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 the white clouds. It, w- no, uh, no, oh, no, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. If he the white cloud should be through the window, like, oh, he's true, true, Rekka. true, 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 true. So, like, Rekka introduced himself, he's like, I work for the for the evangelist, and I'm trying to make an Adola burst, and you have an Adola link, and now I gotta kidnap you, and we're gonna fight. But then, so. Uh, Rekka gets his ass beat by the other lieutenant of Section 1 who just freezes him. And then just through a window, uh, Rekka gets sniped. And that's so he gets killed. And then they look off from the distance. And they're like, there's some people with some white coats there. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, that, that must be the enemy. And that's who we end up like trying to chase after the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the evangelist and the fucking white clod and... Uh, well, like I was saying, we, we receive our new, our new, uh, recruit, which is Tamaki. And then after that, we get, we get Maki and Tamaki at the same time? Or no, Maki Maki was already part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, we start, the company starts. Uh, mm. Shinra gets called into a captain into a meeting with all of the captains. captains correct at the at the soul. What, what's the? It's, it's a church, like a soul church, like uh, the right. Vatican. It's like, it's like the Vatican. It's like the Vatican, it's like but the it's head. also like a nuclear reactor that the whole country uses for energy. Yeah, but it's yeah. like the Great Flame. I don't know. So it's like every. It's like their bosses that they go see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like they that. gotta go. He's gotta go give a debriefing of everything he saw in the white clad, and all the captains are there. And that's where we see the the captain the captain of Section Seven and the lieutenant of Section Seven, right. and, and then that's where the Section Seven arc happens. Mm-hmm. So then we go to like this like get it, air quotes ghetto like I would say old like old history old Japanese town right. It's like a ghetto, but not in like the American term like a like a like it's a, more like a country. Is the countryside almost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's a like poor, a, not yeah, poor it's, side. Not it's urban. a it's a sub. It's like it's, it's, a, it's like an it's like a farming town. It's like a yeah. farming okay. village, farming farming fishing, whatever you want yeah, to call it. But it's it's a more they have traditional Japanese yeah, buildings, yeah. but they're all made of cheap wood, so it seemed to be mm. cheaper. Yeah, and that's where yeah. Company Seven. Is that yes? That's what we mean. And then the the captain there now he's now he's the captain is the strongest fire, fire soldier, soldier mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. He's apparently. a he's a fourth or third generation, but he, uh, he's second and third. He's second and Which third. Which doesn't make yeah. sense, but okay. Which doesn't make but okay. Sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, with Waka, Waka Flaka, mm. yes. It, but yes. he's the coolest character because he's he's he really cool. Like, Benny, he, just, he gets whatever really cool about fight everything. Scene yeah, too. Uh, yeah, Benny Maru, Benny. Yeah. Yeah. He's like wearing a. Uh, uh, what is it? Street Fighter outfit? Yeah, yeah, like, but <laughs> but with his with his firefighter pants still on. Yeah, like he's wearing his like traditional Japanese like key. It's like a fire jacket. kimono. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, whenever so whenever an inferno happens in this part of town, he just like destroys half the fucking town. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> so, <laughs> like, what's oh, happening? <laughs> we all yeah, watch yeah. this. And, yeah. then, and then they explain it later. Old ladies explain it's like, well, that's our sacrifice for living here. That we want to get. If we die, we'd rather 
get killed by him by his hands like because he puts on a show like he's got like these magic fire brooms coming out (laughs) he's he's wrecking shit there's giant explosions and he'll destroy half a block and be like look at what you did you you destroyed half this block mr infernal and like us as the audience we're just like we just watched you do it what yeah (laughs) (laughs) like was he trying to convince that guy that was like okay i did good work you can get me out the the guy that's a fire zombie you're being like yeah oh see reason bro um uh, yeah, it, I, I think it was pretty cool because, yeah, like you said, as being a second generation, third generation, so you can start your own fire and control it. Right, right. So he'll start the fire on these broom things and then he'll just like whip it around and, and then like, explode them and then like fireworks. And it looks like while he fights this inferno, like to the rest of the residents, looks like a little fire show, maybe. I don't know. So just on that, real quick, um, every inferno scene. I was telling Drew and Aldo that the the animation of those are very different from the animation itself, but they're really interesting to see. Like they're so intricate and different. Every inferno or devil, they were pretty much depicted as a devil. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. Yeah, and then speaking of that, like I guess devil beast, when we go into a fire afterwards, it was like a little joke. Like, oh, you fought the beast, man! Like, oh yeah, I fought the beast. So that's a cool a thing, cool. I guess. Another little thing they put in. It's like a devil. Maybe. It's, it's a beast, you know. It's, it's that's crazy. already a lot of that's already a lot of uh, coincidences. So I would say, yeah. you know, the um, the artwork for the Infernals. I'm glad you brought that up. Like it's taken directly from Mister Okubo's uh, Soul Eater manga because like every every monster and character design looks more like the infernals do than the rest of the characters in fire force because like soul eater is supposed to look gothic and like a lot of demons and like vampires and witches and like sights and grim reaper stuff you get what i mean yeah like great dark yeah 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 but like it's still like anime so it's kind of like goofyish in certain points you get what i mean but like on, on a whole like i it, i'm I wish I'd read, like, more interviews before this that Mr. Okubo had done, like, what made him want to change his art direction so much. Because, like, it's clear that he cares so much about the monster designs than he does about, like, character designs. Or maybe because it's, would you say, because it's not as frequent that he could put more time into that? I could see that. I can see that because, like the the like the manga time schedule, they're they're working more than forty hours a week. Oh, okay. Like they have like a very small staff of maybe like two three assistants. They're putting out like a chapter either every week or every other week. So they're working like sixty seventy hours a week and just like that's why um we reviewed an anime called Hunter Hunter. The mangaka the the author of the manga is sick. I did listen to that. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, one, that his wife also does mangas too. Sailor Moon. Or both of those, they do mangas, right? Right, but he's like, he's worked himself like to death. Mm. Like, his level of anxiety is so shot that like, he has like nervous system failure to a certain point that he's trying to train his wife to learn his, his drawing style so that she can continue his work. That's cool. So it's it's cool, but it's not cool because like it sucks that they work like that. You know what I mean? Because they don't even make that much money. Right. It's just they're working to death kind of deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I appreciate that that artists keep their keep themselves a chance to change their like art style because get me wrong, like I appreciate like like styles of of anime from my a certain creator, but if you can do something else, then do something else. Right. Um, back to Company Seven. So uh, we're here because why? Why? Why, why did they visit Com- Company Seven? I don't even remember the the what Company Seven. So they're trying. They're Company Eight came to visit right, Company Seven. Right. Right. And then in the middle of all that, when he fought the Inferno, um, there was a mess. Company Eight asked them like, "Hey, we're just going to help you rebuild." So they were helping rebuild, and then from there, I don't know how it got introduced. But then there was copycats everywhere in the city, and the captain from Sevens was going to beat up the captain from Eights because he thought he saw him talking about um, 
making but, people turn into infernals, but it was a copycat. Mm-hmm. Right. We see that the white clad are hidden in this part of town. Yeah, yeah. In this, uh, the Asakusa district, mm-hmm. right? And one of them can create mirages, mm-hmm. like clones of people. Well, not clones of people, because like, it would be like me taking all this body and putting Jacob it's like a mirror. Shape on, yeah, no, that guy, the, the guy that changes the faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he doesn't make the mirages. The mirages is another guy. Oh, duh. Yeah, but uh, he, uh, yeah, he like heats up the molecules in their faces, and he can switch them around and make them look like other people. I kind of appreciate the pseudo chemistry. Like, I those are like some of my favorite explanations because we did a. Jacob, we did a like a uh, we did a sci-fi anime like three weeks ago. I was talking about Steins Gate. Yeah, and it, like there's a whole episode that's just bullshit science, but it's like the funnest bullshit like you ever listen. Like in the back of your head, you're still like, "This is nonsense." Keep talking to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want more. Yeah, yeah, I just need more of that. Like I don't like the powers that can't be explained, and that's like cat powers, and, or <laughs> one bitch has octopus fire powers. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are stupid. Give me the ones that are like plasma cutters and like the sucking up the entropy of the universe mm-hmm. and like changing the molecules in somebody's face, face? through yeah, yeah, yeah. heat expansion that's cool like mm-hmm. that's dope like uh, but I think to your point the reason that they're there is because of that meeting that you mentioned uh-huh Company Seven is not attached to the church. They're like, we never, we never applied. You guys made us into the company that we are, but like, we don't have no attached to you. So they leave that that meeting early. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, uh, Captain Captain Obi, he's like, hey, I think we should go check them out. You know, Ooh. just in case because the they reason, seem suspicious. yeah, because the reason was that in some accident there was a cross that Company Seven like wanted and like they got it and that's what they were investing uh, investigating them something like that and yeah to bring us to uh, the Wait, we need captains to talk, were yeah we need captains to talk about the captain fight, fight. Yeah, yeah. that was a cool fight yeah so the person that's changing the, the people's faces is kind of tricking everybody into seeing things that you know yeah the, so there was a big captain fight that was really neat because then um the captain from sevens realized that the the main captain from eights didn't have any powers. He was just a normal human, I guess. And he's like, how is he standing up so much? And so he's trying to fight his own battle within while he's fighting this guy. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Big dude. There, there, yeah, there's an anime moment there because it's like he's burning him and he's just like, how aren't you afraid of fire? And it's like, I, I am afraid of the fire, but my company's behind me and I need to protect everyone because you're acting real wild right now. Yeah. <laughs> I never get used to anime speeches. Even Yeah, there's even definitely now. a lot of weird speeches. Like, you didn't need to say <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, you might have said something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. And then... From hey. there, the whole city's freaking out, I think, after the fight. So the main cap- or Captain Seven realizes that something else is happening in his little town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, there's a bunch of duplicates. People are fighting all over the place. And at a certain point, uh, the Waka's just like, everyone just start punching each other. Yeah, that was <laughs> what is happening right now. He tells the whole town, like, we don't know who's fake. Just beat the shit out of each other and, like, we'll deal with it later. Like, I, I somebody punch somebody. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because after the whole fight of the captain, the other guy was was the previous captain. Uh, the the yeah, lieutenant handed it to... Lieutenant, the lieutenant of... Of, Section uh, 7? Of uh, Company 7. Uh, he uh, went f- through this uh, through this thing that happens to people that have fire kinetic powers that if you use them to a point that you exhaust yourself, your body starts decaying. They call it like trophilia. Trophosis. Trophosis. <clears throat> and like your body starts becoming ash or something like that. Yeah, because, okay, so for you to have fire powers, your body has a certain resistance to fire is my understanding of it, right? So that's why, like, when fire users fight each other, they, they it's whoever has the strongest fire wins because, like, if, you're, if your fire is so weak that your body's only used to resisting a certain amount, then a stronger f- flame's gonna hurt you, right? Mm-hmm. So the idea of tephrosis is, like, when you've burnt past, like, they don't say it, but like almost like a layer or like a limit that like, like your a skin, stamina. Yeah, that you, like your skin can like uh, sustain that heat. If you push your body past that, then you're just like it's necrosis, but fire. Like you're just yeah. your, your skin's turning there, to ash. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things within the fights. Every fight scene that it was so easy to hurt somebody or kill somebody, 
But then at some scenes, it was so hard to hurt somebody. If you took but, a fireball to the yeah. face, you'd be dead. Like, <laughs> what, what's the fucking confusion there? Fucking <laughs> Super Mario. Oh, there was. I mean, there was like bigger fights where something so huge never hurt somebody. But he's like, I guess talking about fireballs. Know, you like the intro, right? Of the first half of the season. Oh, the song and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The intro. The intro is really cool. The, the closing, like if you notice, it's almost the same lyrics, just slow down. It's dope. It? It, it's so. Yeah. It's so cool. I like the out- outro. Is really yeah. cool. I really. The like outro is weird because it has an obsession with the sister that the anime yeah. itself doesn't Nobody have. Nobody asked for it. Nobody no. asked for it. There's, no. there's little character building on the part of the sister, but for some reason, like they insist on sexualizing this character. They insist on throwing like. Lo, like, you need to get an erection to this woman right now. Because no. <laughs> it's just like a montage of like of our our sister. She's jumping water being, on herself. Yeah, being in the in the coven and going through her like I don't know the process of becoming a nun, and it's just like yeah. scenes. I don't know. I like the I like the outro song. The outro too. sounds cool. Outro, outro sounds cool. cool. Yeah. It, but it's just like because the very first part of it is she's just wearing like a a thin white dress, dumps dumps water on herself, Man. and she's just kneeling. So you just see like just two D butt cheeks, <laughs> <laughs> and then the the camera is just like panning yeah, upwards. Like, like I guess like. <laughs> This cool song is going on. So yeah, like, I guess it's cool. Do I turn up? She's ready to awesome. finish the song. I guess. <laughs> with, with this music video, <laughs> uh, crazy shit. But what yeah, the intro. <laughs> Fireballs in the face. Yeah. yeah okay. So, Wet butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, besides all that nonsense, while all that's happening, explosions and stuff. We're going back to the, that episode. Um, Shinra gets introduced to his chicken feet. That weird, like, x-ray oh, yeah. foot thing, and it's like a... I, I, it's, how would you explain it? It's part it? of the Adola link, but it's like his consciousness is transferring to the Adola universe or something. And yeah, that was weird, though, because he was confused, too. Like, what is this shit? I like that you mentioned that, because... He, yeah, he's seeing his feet and he's getting like this fucking like that sort of raven vision. (laughs) (laughs) And he's he's looking at his feet, but the feet look like they have like a rib cage for some fucking reason. (laughs) Yeah, it has like a calf rib cage. (laughs) A calf rib cage. And it has like strong calves, my friend. Whoa, dude. I went jogging this morning. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So yeah. it's but it's like it's an implication that he's like entering uh, the Adola Link or Adola Universe or something, because so then we see the white clouds, we see the the chick with the bow and arrow that uh, sniped um, the the star fire dude from Company Seven or no Company One, and uh, she has just this brute with her, right? So Arthur and uh, our main guy are mm-hmm. trying to fight these two people. And the brute just like eats a bug and turns into like a super strong infernal. This is where Jacob was talking about about that change of anime or that change of animation style where they're they're because they're bumping heads a lot, Arthur and Shinra. Because yeah. they don't know how to work as a theme a team. A theme. And, a theme. And they notice that the other the, the other team is actually having a formation and everything like that. And yeah, you start seeing like all these weird animations what you mentioned is like, cool. They're just confused and mad at each other, not at the scene has nothing to do with the world around them. It's just internal, like, them too. Like, oh, I hate you. A lot mm-hmm. of shonen anime are like this too, and I've heard this complaint a lot, especially with um, ones that emulate, like, the, an early 2000s kind of directing style, because One Piece gets a lot of flack for this. There's, like, a funny change in animation. There's, like, the... What's it called? The Like, the, the comedy bit, the comedy takeaway, the... Punchline? Uh, uh no... It's going to hit me later. But, like, so there's a complete change in, like, thematics just to make, like, a quick joke in, like, the most serious scene. And that's a really big complaint about the anime we're watching next week, which is One Piece, is that One Piece, even now, at, like, episode 980-something, will have, like, the most fucking serious scene with the biggest fucking fight that they've been building up for forever... Out of nowhere, there's just a cut to like some fart Stupid. joke or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, <laughs> they're in the 
the writer got bored. He's like, I'm done. And you're like, like, make a fart joke. And you're like, it's, <laughs> it's Friday night. It's like, fuck it, I'm stopping right now. <laughs> Stop me at this fart joke. <laughs> Oda's just like, this is my fart joke. I need this right here. I can't keep. I'm not gonna make the episode a thousand. Like, it's just an intricate way for him to tell you fart jokes. <laughs> 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 anyway, but yes, Fire Force does that a lot too, yeah. and and it's almost like like you can almost make the argument against the author being like that's like cheap storytelling a mm. little bit because you can't build like that suspense correctly to the point that you feel like you need that that comedy cop out almost. And you know what? Okay. I can I can almost mirror that to what the one of the complaints from like the Marvel movies is that sometimes they put in a lot of jokes everywhere. But those are cool. No, no. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> <it's too hard. laughs> yeah, all saying. of a sudden. All of a sudden. <laughs> so I'm saying like I'm not hating on those. I Jacob like those. I'm not hating on it, but but like the Marvel ones are cool cuz like me and you have talked about this before. Spider-Man's like my favorite Marvel character. And Peter Parker as a character is always telling jokes in costume. You know what yes. I mean? Which is why like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, like those are maybe the best movies, but that's not what Peter they Parker. That's what they lacked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's not Peter. It was a 30... 30- Two year old motherfucker playing. And he's supposed to be like yeah. 19, 20 or something like yeah. that, a college student. What is he gonna joke about? Mortgage and. <laughs> but <Weather. laughs> it's crazy. That's why I like the beginning of Spider Man Homecoming because he's telling jokes, there's a bunch of quips, like mm-hmm. he's swinging people up and just telling them. High that. energy. Yeah, yeah, like that's how Spider Man is. Like every the beginning of every Spider Man comic is just him swinging in, bit bopping people and making bad jokes the whole time. Yeah, like, but, but <laughs> you, know, you know from the serious Marvel movies that they. Putting jokes like in the middle of like Thor dialogue. Ragnarok was a serious film. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, we see this big dude eat a eat yeah. A bug. The big dude eats a bug. I thought they bought him. I don't know why he ate it. I was I, like, what? Did he eat it? I don't remember. He that ate part. it, but yeah. normally they put it into their necks. And or yeah, just, yeah, it was uh, yeah, yeah. It anywhere was, in their body. It felt like a JoJo scene with the with the cherry. The the red red scene. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so he's eating the bug. It's super long and pause, and you see him gulp it, and you're just like. What's, what's the fuck's going on? <laughs> and he just turns into like a conscious infernal and he's got big powers and this is where the uh, Waka is just like, alright, fuck it. Like, I'm gonna go fight this thing. And he just launches him a thousand feet into the air. Mm-hmm. It, but uh, before that, we learned that he turned into a devil, not an infernal. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah there's a difference. Right? Because So that's what I was gonna say. I know this is jumping way ahead, but at the end of the season, I was it the same guy at the tunnel? No. No, he it died. Was it wasn't. No, it, it looked the same. Mm-hmm. But Kinda he died. No, he okay, didn't have. Okay. He didn't have the Thanos ball sack. Okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> that's how I was like, I'm uh, confused. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what we learned from that lieutenant in in the ca- company seven is that the way he got his necrosis or whatever um, is because long ago they show they go a lot of uh, uh, like backstory and uh, and a lot of episodes they go to where he. And Waka were fighting a devil, and fucking oh, uh, the the lieutenant he just Conroe. knocked him out. He Conroe. Kno- Conroe. Conroe knocked out Benny. Conroe knocked out Benny for him to save himself. But they were both almost exhausted, like we talked earlier. Like they were almost about to with the tephrosis. Yeah, with the tephrosis. So that's how he got his 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 that's, moments. Yeah, yeah. That's why Conro is so like tephrosized. <laughs> so. <laughs> so <Is> that- <laughs> So when this big dude it's this fucking bug, he turns into another devil, and then and then this when fucking Walker swips in like fucking Harry Potter style. Yeah, yeah, with his fire brooms, he's just like I'm gonna take this thing thir- a thousand feet in the air. And uh, last year, did you watch the the most recent ep- uh, season of My Hero Academia? Yeah. No, wait, no, no, the most you didn't. I don't think so. Oh god. Anyways, so um, in My Hero Academia. Jacob, which is an anime about kids becoming superheroes, so they go to superhero high school, is the 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 number one hero by season three is this guy with fire powers. And the fi- same scene that we have with Waka where he launches, launches him a thousand feet in the air so that he doesn't hurt anybody with his fire powers, we see Endeavor uh, do the same thing. So he just launches his monster a thousand feet in the air and just does this mega sun flare solar... Stupid burn and like, it, and I think even then it's called like Hellfire or something similar. And then he just falls to the ground. And, and this is a lot of the same sense I'm getting because the conflict we see in this episode is we know Waka's super capable because he's the strongest fire soldier or whatever, right? But the other white clad, the one with the bow and arrow, shoots her arrow up to go catch him up in the air. So 
that's where we get another Shinra Adola Link moment where he hears the captain like begging Shinra to just get up there and save the captain. Mm -hmm. So Shinra does that. We see him hit break the sound barrier like twice or something because we get that those little sonic booms. Mm, yeah, but um, the the reason that I mentioned that devil in the first place or the fucking necrosis or tephrosis, whatever you want to call it, uh, is that that captain sees the the other like evangelist or white claw member that shoots that arrow and he's about to like f- like you know flame on but <laughs> he just like trips down the stairs and, like hits yeah he his falls down a ladder bro <laughs> like, like that. dude that shit was awesome and like he's like oh please somebody help and that's when that's when Shinra gets all this fucking crazy shit and that's when he fucking like just blasts us off yeah and and that's where we see him just like trying to just roast the shit out of the 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 arrow so that's another thing like that's not how fire works like the arrow is mass but it's fire and it's up to shinra to blow more fire on it to switch its direction and that's like not how fire i was just gonna say fire in general (laughs) it's like how would it keep one mass going upward i don't know i I don't know bro too much bro it's because it, it i feel like i wouldn't care if it didn't pretend to care about the science sometimes like, sometimes it cares a lot about the science, and sometimes it doesn't. Speaking of scientists, what? The next situation that weirdo scientist tries to at, or come into Station 8 out of nowhere, and everybody's tripping on him. Like, that's... I was confused Well, we're on, tripping on him. I, I thought he was a bad guy. I still think he's a bad guy. I, I, my understanding is... He just showed up out of nowhere to the station... And everybody's confused just as much as we are. Yeah. My understanding is he gets more of a backstory in season two. Okay. But, like, you're right. Because the only time we've seen him, he's working with Joker, who we assumed was a bad guy. We still assume he's a bad guy. Yeah, we still sort of have... He's an anti-hero? I don't know. know. Yeah, I'm I'm with that. (laughs) Anti-hero? So, Joker, the anti-hero, is not the main villain. And we knew the guy working with him is a scientist. And now we're expected to trust him? But yeah. he, we even see dialogue the Victor Least. Yeah, Elite. But then also the captain from Fives is still like chilling there. Mm-hmm. She's still she's still hanging out and at the same time she's question questioning him like, what are you doing here, man? Like, what's your problem? Right. So Princess Hibana is there and she's even telling Captain Ob Obio, Obito, what, what's the captain name? Obi. Obi. Okay, so even she's telling Captain Obi, like, I don't trust this guy. And Captain Obi's like, bro, I have, like, half a station. So, like, I'll take anybody right now. <laughs> but, like, I've got my eyes on him. Don't worry. Thank you. So, uh, our next little bit is we, we're like, oh, we have to go get an engineer, right? Because we're already at the second half of the anime. And the, <laughs> and the director was like, oh, shit, we forgot. There's a bigger narrative that we're supposed to be trying to accomplish by a certain point. So then we're just speeding through shit and, and we're just going through checklists at this point. It feels like, okay, we got our scientists and we're about to get an engineer in the same episode. Mm-hmm. I uh, I did see the rush or like the... The change of pace? Uh, the change of pace. But I didn't see it rushed. I still think it was going a little bit too... Slow? Sl- not slow, but mid. Like it was going like regular anime... Uh, pace and mm-hmm. then at the end like l- last five episodes or last that's where it's just like boom she just takes off yeah. yeah she just takes off that's when I feel it's rushed but not yet side note the new intro happens around that time it's ass it is shit it is, so it is it's shit a, it, it, it is like hardcore music that like hardcore music that's not really hardcore music if you listen to hardcore music and at the same time the picture behind the music doesn't go well like at the very couple seconds, they're all friends and buddies, and it's like gore. It's like screamo. <laughs> yes, like, it's weird. It, it, it's like what 2012, like corporate America thinks hardcore music mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. and it's made by a Japanese band, which is like worse. Because like it, at the beginning of the song, like when it changed, I was like, oh fuck, I forgot I did this. <laughs> and, and then, and then it's like some Japanese band name, and I'm just like, motherfuckers, what did you do? Yeah, what, you, you <laughs> what did you it. do? <laughs> no, who convinced you to sing in English for this? Like if this was in Japanese, I I'm feel sure like it'd be, be easier for me to get. All 
out because I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? But the lyrics to this are just like, you got to believe in yourself. You got to get what you got. You got to yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta get what you got. You got to get what you do. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, this sounds like Fast and the Furious dialogue. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Fast and the Furious dialogue. <laughs> so you're just like, this is That's ass. Uh, yeah, so I skipped through. Every intro on that one. Good. And outro on that one, too. Yeah. Outro it's is slows, just as bad. It slows down a lot. For yeah. no reason. Yeah. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Because, like, the first 14 episodes... When it came back during the fall anime season, it was like a different anime all of a sudden. I remember watching it and just being like... Because at the time, I was working at Common Ground. And I was always watching anime at the bar while bartending. And... At a certain point, I just stopped putting on Fire Force. I was like, this is asshole. Like, because I wouldn't even get anybody until 9 p.m. And I'm just in the bar just drinking an IPA and just watching anime by myself. So it, the fall anime season came around. I was like, I guess Fire Force is dead to me or whatever. Like, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's just it. So, and then it continues with them trying to go to the guy Vulcan. Vulcan? Mm -hmm. Vulcan? Whatever. He's the engineer, right? Right. Yeah. So he's some legendary engineer that every Fire Force captain is trying to This is a recruit. position in, in the fire department, right? You're asking me? Yes. So there's a multiple, I guess, names for it. Mm -hmm. And that engineer came from back in the day, which is now a driver spot. Mm -hmm. So it goes different ranks. Other stations, other cities call it different. But some people call it engineers. Some people call it, um, like, fire suppression technician. And then, so it starts from firefighter, then driver, then lieutenant, then captain, then chief. So that's what it would be. But as of how they interpret it in the anime, it's just him building shit. It's like you a know? literal engineer. Yeah, he's a literal engineer. But in the real world... Because it was called engineer, the old uh, pumpers, or there are steam pumpers, we have one in one of the old stations. There's so many intricate pipings. It's crazy, man. So you have to really know pressure and all that situation, like how much pressure to give, how much pressure is coming in. So it's mm -hmm. technically an engineer job. Mm -hmm. And that's why I guess they come with that name. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's badass. Uh, but yeah, we see the uh, Vulcan... Has like a little almost Krillin character or like little dude character that uh, he's got like a child that he's babysitting and who's his air quotes apprentice. He's got a air quotes girlfriend also, mm -hmm. and they're living in a junkyard while dealing with Vulcan just do bullshit experiments all day. Yeah, because his family, his grandpa and his dad. Um, denied working for the company around them, which was yeah, it uh, still Dr. doesn't Doctor Giovanni's. Yeah, it still doesn't one hundred percent explain their history, but they the family has a history mm -hmm. of not giving the fire force their secrets mm -hmm. or their full attention of building shit for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shit like that. And uh, at this point, like from everything that you've watched. You start getting the sense of like other companies are kind of like of a Gestapo kind of way. And like when the evangelists act like crusaders in a way. We we're talking about this the other day. Because mm -hmm. we then we start seeing Mirage, the guy that you mentioned uh, earlier. And the guy that makes like a morning star with. Yeah, with his it. name's like literally Morningstar or something, which uh, I again I think is like really like lazy. What's it? What's his weapon gonna be? Oh, how about a Morningstar? Yeah, uh, like we're we gonna name like, him. I just couldn't. Morningstar. <laughs> I didn't like that. So this is our Arthur building episode, right? Because the uh, the captain of Company Three, Doctor Giovanni, is a mad scientist. The guy wearing a fucking plague doctor mask ended up being a mad scientist, right? So we're ex we're expected to feel shocked about that, and he knocks out. Shinra, and so this Arthur against Mirage and Morningstar trying to defend uh, Vulcan's lab against these two white clad members. And so Vulcan makes because Arthur's a dumbass, like he gives into like outfits and it makes him feel more knightly. 
So his sword plasma is stronger, and so he gives him like a half-assed uh, what's donkey that? face. What's that really famous like Spanish book? Is he oh, no. he don oh. he Don Quixote's him into like with like a mule outfit Don Quixote I, I thought shit that was hilarious he had like a weird belt like donkey a, face like, like, a, like a strap on donkey yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hated it so much I was just like this is dumb that this is so bro. dumb and, but even the the bad guys in that scene looked at him like what is this crazy guy doing like what is this shit and like he's just like half eyed open he's like I'm a knight yeah so <laughs> so that's how they beat him they just like Mirage just makes a Mirage image of himself and it's just like look you look like a dumbass and he's just like oh I do look stupid and like that's that's the end of that of like episode 15 oh it's yeah just, that's what happens that's like yeah. the end of episode 15 it's just Arthur feels stupid and the, now he's powerless and like can't at make the, his sword at the same time we meet Dr. Giovanni which is which is like this doc like plague doctor character and we seem to know that he's using like a lot of like mechanical stuff so we know he's kind of a foil to Vulcan because right. he's also like like using like mechanics for his like self game. It, they don't explicitly say it, but like it's kind of clear that he's a second generation fire pyrokinetic because like he makes machinery that have a flame and he can control that flame and control that machinery's direction. So like he's got like a fucking rocket arm and he can mm-hmm. control the rocket arm by his second gen powers. So uh, we saw we saw that the like the three main little people in the in in company A, which is Shinra, the sister, and Arthur, they went to go visit Vulcan to ask for his help. He denies them because of the whole promise he made to his family. They send the powerless sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, they're just like, you can't do anything. You go help. And Shinra gets another another Abdullah link. Uh, right. But this time, it was out of the Dr. Giovanni's bloodlust. Right. Which brings me to Hunter Hunter. Yeah, because that's Ahsoka. Yeah, and and he goes, he fly, he blasts us off from that from that location, from the Vulcan location, to go look for for these people. Then we see Princess Hibana having a conversation with Doctor Giovanni. Doctor Giovanni is like, you've been you've been like spending too much time with these fools, blah blah blah, something something. Because they both work for Hajima Industries. Mm-hmm. Because both section what is this three and five are supposed to be tied to Hajima Industries, and that's again like the corruption that's there. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, we know that that Giovanni is like like OP at this point. Mm-hmm. He's very intimidating. And he, him, and and he, he ends up showing up to Vulcan because he has the key to the plant. To, Not the key to the plant. To, but I'm he's trying to, to find. He's trying to find <clears throat> the the key, skim, like the key or the key to the, Amaterasu because their no. their nuclear reactor sun god thing is called Amaterasu. And then Vulcan's family built it, right? Right. But, Something weird like that. Or he has the secrets to building it. Well, there's some Japanese lore there because Amaterasu is the Japanese uh, Taoist sun god. Okay. So, like, there's even a game called, like, uh, Amaterasu and it's just about you playing this wolf sun god thing. Okay. So, that, that there's just, like, that's, like, the imagery there. Because not only is it stealing from the Catholic Church, it's stealing from, like, traditional Japanese spiritualism at the same time. And so, Princess Ibana lets Shinra out of his restraints mm-hmm. after yeah, at the same time she didn't want to cause she she said something weird like I should just take you back home yeah like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah yeah she's, <laughs> she's like, like oh, she's I like how you him. are or something yeah, she, like that she really likes this kid but then at the same time she when other people realize it she's like what no I'm just playing and Shinra doesn't give a shit about her he's just like whatever what's the bunny character or the bunny power girl from uh, MHA bunny yeah like the bunny uh, tan character. Oh, 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 um, fuck. Oh, it shit. reminds me. Ms. Princess Ivana reminds me exactly of her. Cause they're brown. No, cause just, they're both brown. <laughs> no, cause just you like don't the see brown <laughs> anime characters that much. <laughs> you're just like the character <laughs> design. No, oh, you no. you saw brown. Whatever, girl. dude. Whatever. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> so he let she lets him loose, and then Shinra goes to help out what's happening already. Mirko. Miracle, okay. there you go. So they go back and then out of nowhere, 
uh, Vulcan's I was talking chick. about straight hair and light <laughs> hair, bro. Whatever, bro. You Jeez. saw like a brown character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like all brown women are the same to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, although. <laughs> so anyways. Anyway, so like Vulcan's chick out of nowhere just punches the shit out of him. And then it turns out that she's a bad chick too. Like, oh no! What is her name? Uh, yeah, I don't know her name. I don't yeah, remember yeah, her name the... at all. But she just she's already inside the building, and, she, and she's like, "Fuck you! Boom. Give me the information!" And then yeah. she lets in the doctor. Volk, she's like, um, "You're the doctor." Bro. She's like, "I was faking it the entire time." <laughs> yeah. Lisa. Yeah, Lisa was. Yeah, faking yeah, the entire name. Huh? So Lisa's been a fake girlfriend of Vulcan this whole time, so she could get the key for Doctor Giovanni, so they can break into Amaterasu or something. Uh huh. <laughs> and this is, I hate her power because it's, it's, it's a squid it's a fire yeah. squid and this is again what I'm talking about it's not fire because it has like some weird like particle liquid de- like tendencies to it like I don't know bro that's not fire no. <laughs> I don't know how does how does Doctor Strange make a sword out of thin air but uh-huh. it's it makes sense in the universe they explain is my thing. Oh, okay. My good. thing is well, they're not explaining it. Why would your fire just be a squid for no reason? He likes squids. Yeah. But yeah, then the doctor finds the key, the USB. Yeah, it's just so, a USB. It's just a USB. That's all. That's all it is. It's just a USB. To, to break into this nuclear yep. reactor, you just need one USB. Yeah, drive, he bro. got it. Oh, well, he got it, and then. From there, what else happened? Oh, show his brother was introduced. Right. At that same situation, the fight at the end. Right. So Morningstar so. and Shimmer are getting their ass kicked by Shinra. So show the the presumed dead brother of Shinra shows up and he's a white claw white white claw. White, <laughs> a, white a white a white clad captain. And he has the power to use a world dough and stop time and uh, gives Shinra a concussion. Yeah, but then also, <laughs> the brother show, he fights that guy Joker. Oh, that's So that's right. when it gets kind of weird for me watching it. Like, okay, so who is Joker at this what point? What side is Joker Yeah, Jonah yeah. On? Like, it seemed bad, but now at this point, he seems like he's just trying to show information, not really being on anybody's side. And the, only, he does reason, Joker. the only reason he fights him is because Joker knows that, that the unit is escaping Dr. Giovanni and, and his, 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 his guys. And the only reason Joker comes in is to make time for them to get some distance. Because he's fighting show, and they're almost like the same. Right, because we know that Victor Leeds is working for Joker. Uh-huh. So Leeds shows up out of nowhere in the matchbox, and is like, scoop up the boys, let's go, let's go, let's go. And, and, and even Princess Hibana at a certain point is like, how the fuck did you know that they were in trouble and that they needed to be scooped up? And she's like, oh, I don't know, they were gone for a while, I just came to check on them. And so... As an audience, yeah, as an audience, you're like, this guy... That guy. This guy. He's not to be trusted. Yeah, he's not. But at the same time, Joker saved them. So, who knows? So, Joker, within his who knows powers, like, he is able to match show to distract them a little bit so they can get some distance. But then, we also see that, like, he got them too. Like, because you see, like, a little rip of his bandana at some point. And, I don't know. It's just very crazy. I don't know. So, then, that's when we go into, like, the final arc of the anime. Because now that we have our engineer and we're... Oh, no, 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 We have a mini training arc. Right, right, yeah. It's just like, we already know what we want to do, so you have to train for that. Right. They're going to bust into the ether, which they know is the secret layer. Underground layer shit. But, like, it wasn't even secret. Everybody knew it was, like, an evil underground area. But it was forbidden because it was bad. That's right. All it was. So, like, the bad guys were there the whole time. Nobody no, nobody expected that. It took, like, a whole like, They season. didn't have a unit to go check down there, you it, know? It like... took, like, a whole season for us to be like, oh, the bad guys are in the evil area. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, you God. mean the evil layer? <laughs> Who oh, knew? Evil guys? <laughs> The evil lady. So, uh, Captain Obi sends the, the rookies back to Section 7 to, like, get their firepowers up. And now Arthur learns traditional samurai techniques. 
And Shinra knows how to do jet propulsion. Yeah. Kata's focuses <laughs> on his body. They pretty much just focus on... He focuses chakra, which yeah. instead of chakra, we have fire. So but we... I think before, they never really had training. They just went... So this was their first yeah. real training on their powers. And they trained right? with Waka, which we, which we presume to be like the strongest. So, so pinpoint on that one, on training, because it relates later on, probably like the last couple... Episodes. Last two episodes. So um, we bust into the ether. Yeah. All of Section 8. We we even have the useless fucking nun. We got an unpowered engineer. We which, have an unpowered scientist. Which we're not fucking dealing with any, like, infernals anymore. Like, she's only there to, like, like exercise the fucking... When the, we kill a person, zombies, you're you going to pray I mean? over them. When I shoot somebody in the head, you're going to pray over them so for me. She's not even, like, a regular priest or, or like, or, or something like, like that. A like a video game arch wizard yeah. or something with powers? Yeah. She's just an unpowered bitch that just prays in the background? Like. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things like that. They're already down underground. What is it called in the, the uh, ether. ether? But they're already down there, and there's a lot of serious moments. But at the same time, this whole throughout the whole series, they put in a lot of funny little spots, like when the same the manipulator, I guess, a person that would manipulate the face. They separate the whole team with smoke, and then at one point, the nun. Is separated with uh, who's that other girl? Maki. Not Tamaki. Maki. No, yeah. she's with Tamaki. Oh, Tam- Tamaki. Tamaki. Yeah, and there's two of Tamakis, so she's trying to figure out who's real and who's not, and or who's the imposter. So, and at one point, they have a boy voice and the normal character voice. I, like, it's, I, it's me, and then it's like it's me. Oh no, yeah, and, yeah, and then so. they'll be like, I have I have my magical fire cat ears, remember? And then the fake Tamaki is just like, obviously I can't do that. Like, what the <laughs> yeah, fuck? yeah. So <laughs> that's a weird like infiltrate kind of mind thing. But at the same time, serious stuff's happening. But there's all little, a lot of little People funny are stuff that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are dying, but we're telling jokes at the same yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, like that shit's fucking funny. The fucking fight when and you said this the the arsenal or some shit like that the the villain that is supposed to be super OP that shoots like big old crimson bullets and oh she, oh, she, oh when they they pull out he's like an all in white yeah right? she yeah, fights yeah. Maki and Maki's like the buff one and she oh, like yeah, beats yeah. the shit out of him because she grabs her tit or something like that yeah right because he's like no you're thinking so Tamaki pure. you said Maki no 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 but this is the no no the the girl the two girls fight oh, the guy right. in the white that's right the, the that's nun right. and the Tamaki. cat Tamaki. That's right. fight the so, guy in the white so no, that no. fight happens and she, he's being like super OP but then like she trips and like his hand just somehow yeah ends, she gets naked like, again like again, in, always <laughs> in between her bra and like he's just like I feel so impure cause they're meant to be seen like as crusaders like bible people yeah so, <laughs> so he's just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then it just freaks out his focus, and then yeah. she starts beating him. And, they, and, they're just, and they just beat him with a pipe. <laughs> like, towards the it's end. these two girls just yeah. beat him, they're kicking him, and it's just yeah. like, a little kick scene. <laughs> like, it turned to, like, fighting an enemy to, like, like I beating should. up a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, but the coolest one, when the when the crew gets separated, the coolest one is when uh, the lieutenant's fighting, the oh, bitch with the we, arrows. We talked about this. That yes. guy that switches okay. barrels? Yes, yes. They, it's a <laughs> lieutenant, right? He's yeah, because like, he can manipulate the explosion, right? So he can make a regular rifle do like a giant fucking grenade explosion. Just that a, fight scene was really cool because it lasted so long. Mm-hmm. But it was a really good fight because... He's just like... Yeah. Launching this and just blowing up like each barrel at a time and just like just replacing it. And, and then at the end of that, I think it was the next episode or so when um, the guy with the sword, yeah, author, he's author, like author. He came and then that's where I put the pinpoint. He came there and the lieutenant was already beat up and they were still fighting the arrow. That's her name, Arrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, Arrow, Arrow. You fight. You shoot arrows. Your name's Arrow. Yeah. So anyway, they were there. He was helping the lieutenant, and then Arrow, or the he already killed Arrow, and then the guy that has Mirage, Mirage. Mirage. He yeah, was you do there. Mirages. Mirage. Your name's yeah, your name's Mirage. So at that point, he stopped and. It slowed him down, and he was referring back to the training. The, the training. So yet again, a lot of things go back to training in real life, like like real which, life firefighting. Yeah, yeah, real life fire. All your training stuff really does happen where it comes second nature because we do it so much. Or when you stop and you have to slow down, exactly what he did. I was just like, okay, like I've already did this. 
let me focus on this like i trained for this for a reason mm-hmm. and that's where i saw like oh that's cool like they manipulated they they he put his training to use mm-hmm. so like he really slowed down and listened for the breath right the mm-hmm. breath of the yeah the kill like yeah. that's what it's called yeah, the, yeah the breath of life that was breath of life yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's what firefighters do uh, <laughs> so uh uh, to that point, yeah, there is a lot of this like in animes because that's another anime moment because you're going you're to have your training and you, when you get to the point, you're always like, going to reflect back to the training. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, fucking my master said oh, so right. and so and this and this, you know what I'm I, saying? I remember when Aldo Mendes told me to believe in myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but it, it is very cool because he just stands still and he acts like a swordman now, not like just like a wild ass knight, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, at the same time, the Vulcan and the Captain are together, and they're fighting Dr. Giovanni and Lisa. Yes, the octopus mm-hmm. fire I like, lady. I, I like Maki's fight. Do we not like Maki's fight? It's, oh, oh, the punches well, with the, yeah, the flame. With the, with the oh, cannons? she's fighting Flail. Who the, is she fighting, though? Flail. That's right. She's fighting right. Flail. Morningstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big Flail. dude. He's I, looked the big... Up, I looked it up. His name's Flail. Oh, Flail is not Morningstar? Okay. <laughs> he, he's Which a, is like, same thing. A Flail is yeah. a Morningstar. But, yeah, but yeah, he's the yeah. big dude that yeah. just like... Oh, it's a woman off your yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and like you can't call her anything masculine or she's gonna freak out and beat the shit out of you. Like Because the because uh Vulcan, the engineer, has not made uh this new this new device for Maki and it's like this cannons and we haven't even mentioned this, but Maki can create these two side characters called Flare and Blooper Bupper. Um these little two fireballs. It's it's uh it's Sputter, sputter and, it's, yeah, sputter and it's sputter and flare or something. Yeah, like that. that's exactly. Yeah, what it sputter is. and flare, and she uh, he makes these like almost like wireless punching gloves that are powered. <laughs> They're Wi-Fi, by the way. That are powered. It's Bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> that are powered by like the. Flare and sputter, yeah, yeah, and like they just punch people. Like, so like it seems like they're floating, and that's how she's just like punching yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, and I thought I thought that shit was bad. Ass. I think it was perfect for her powers because she was manipulating the flame, moving mm-hmm. the flame. So it was that's cool. And so they're making like mirror images of her, but she beats the shit out of that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that he was does. A cool. Everyone's getting fight. beat pretty bad. It wasn't a, a big fight. But it was a good, like... Because it didn't even take, like, a whole episode, no, like, the it Lieutenants. Was the Lieutenants was, like, drawn out. Yeah. It was, like... Like, he we're going to go to dies. commercial. Like, yeah, yeah, this dude's almost dead. But then the weakest one for me was uh, the Vulcan and Captain one. Mm-hmm. Because it's Dr. Giovanni and Lisa, and it's Vulcan being like, Oh, no, Lisa, I still love you, even though you were faking it the whole time. Please come back. Like, I'm sorry. And it's the... So, like... Lisa's like an orphan that Dr. Giovanni picked up and like brainwashed her. So like she only knows to be loyal to Dr. Giovanni. And that's like the worst part of it because it, it it's just Vulcan just simping and we're we're just like Vulcan don't do it. She's she's mean. But um Dr. Giovanni at one of the episodes he says three things. He's like the easiest thing he says like uh manipulating brainwash and something else like that's what he revolved around to make his company stronger i guess Mm -hmm. so it shows that trait that was pretty interesting and then shinra everybody's vulcan Vulcan shoots the captain oh that's right that's yeah yeah, he's so he's 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 so he's so fucking torn apart on on two different decisions, right? Yeah, because, like, Dr. Giovanni just grabs Lisa and says, I'm just going to cut her neck off. neck off. Like, I'm just going to, like, flame scorch this wire, just cut her neck off, and Vulcan, it's up to you to shoot Captain Obi for us to be done with it. So, and I hate that because it's such, it ends up being a deus ex machina, which is, like, the cheapest fucking writing because it's just, like, Vulcan shoots Captain Obi and it's just, like, jokes on you. I secretly made him a bulletproof vest this whole time. And it's just like, ah, oh, that's such a cop out. That's so like, it's not a good narrative structure that they work their way around it. It's just like me as an author, I just thought you, of this shit to get me out of the situation. You found yourself in a corner and you had to get yourself yeah, out. Yeah, he know? wrote himself. He wrote himself into a corner and just had to like make up some bullshit to get out of it. And I don't know. Okay, but uh, that I mean, it explained. They try to explain themselves at the end. 
So then Dr. Giovanni. Giovanni left in the darkness. I don't know why they didn't beat his ass. But yeah, they just, just let left. him walk off. He just, like, yeah. they're talking to him normally. Like, like, well, whatever, bro. You lost. See, see you then, next time. Yeah, <laughs> they let him. They, he walks through there. Yeah, yeah. And, it's just, and they're just like, later, bro. I'm holding <laughs> Lisa now. And Lisa's just there, just concussed. And like, oh, they just I let mean, him must go, listen yeah. to Giovanni. Must. It, it, okay, no, there's a really creepy scene in that fight that disturbed me a little bit because Dr. Giovanni's describing like his brain control of Lisa and he's just like, I taught you everything to do physically to manipulate a man and all those things that he likes, you learn through me. And so was, he likes me. Yeah, and I'm just this like, whoa! My boy. <laughs> I like whoa. your guys' uh, Dr. Giovanni voice. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. But it's super <laughs> creepy. And it's like, so he's like raping and sexually like uh, like molding this girl to manipulate men. And that's like what the underlying piece of the dialogue there. And you're just like. Like a pimp? Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, uh, okay. And yeah. then the very next piece of dialogue after there is Captain Obi saying super, something super anime. And just like, it doesn't matter what you did with her. She's part of us now. Okay, all right. She's just like that, that. That was like a juvenile answer to what we just heard. We just heard yeah. that a child was getting raped <laughs> growing up. Like, okay. <laughs> then it shows like uh, the next episode. Shino just has these weird ass dreams, and in those dreams, he had like a all white background with a red eye, and he thought it was the nun. He kept saying it was the nun, but it, it he still doesn't know who it is. And I think it was his brother. At the end of everything, mm -hmm. I think it was his brother, but it wasn't clear. He just had, like, a weird vision. Yeah, I think the implication there is it is his brother because him and his brother share an Adola link together, which is, like, what we're about to explain because the fight that Shinra has is with Sho. And Sho is our only, is, like, our second introduction of an Adola link because they keep saying Shinra is an Adola link, Shinra is an Adola link. And, and Adola burst. As well. Adola burst. And he still doesn't know what that is. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. We don't even know what it is. And we just know it's a super awesome firepower because it's uh, Shinra and the scientist dude. And, like, they're moving so quickly that, like, uh, Leech can't even, like, follow their movements because they're just, like, they'll come out of, like, they're, they're doing the Dragon Ball fight animation where it's just like they're so oh, fast it's oh, just like here they just look like, like flashes here, and then here, they hit here, yeah, yeah yeah so they're doing the Dragon Ball thing to save money on animation <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah it's yeah. to save money on animation so that they don't have to put the in between like segment instead of them going like like you okay, can okay. this they just go like flip but flip. but at you're, you're already going into the fight but within the fight he was trying to I guess Shinra was trying to explain who he was to show that's mm -hmm. the show he's like hey I'm your brother and show's like dude I don't know you he's like nah bro like trust me I'm your brother he's like nah man I don't know you and like, that was the entire <laughs> the entire like jizz that fucking Shinra's trying to put he's like he's just treating him like his little brother the entire time he's like haha what you're mad bro like the whole like... fight is them playing tag yeah and that would be my reaction too if some weirdo was calling me their brother I'd be like who the fuck are you you <laughs> fucking weirdo get away from me and so they fight each other by playing tag. But at the same time, Shinra is watching show because he's so strong. And Shinra tries to get stronger at that point, too. And that, right? that's anime. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain that's anime, that. Like, yeah. he, gets, he gets stronger from fighting his brother, but he also is watching his brother, how he's getting faster, I guess. And this is where we see the world from, like, JoJo's adventure. Yeah. Uh, where... Shows where... got Dio's the world powers. That world, though. Yeah. Because he can just, like, pause the universe for, like, a certain amount of time. Yeah. And he starts beating his ass for a while until, like, Shinra just... Turns into like this fucking like Back to the Future kind of fucking thing. Well, if if you notice too though, uh, he so Sh show fights with a sword, and show is using the back side of the sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because was yeah. yeah. Oh, I he, didn't know. He's that. not using the bladed side. I only know that because of the fucking nineties anime Roromi Kenshin, because he had a katana that had the blunt side on the curved end, and then the blade was on the other end, so that he couldn't kill people. So Sho was not trying to kill Sh uh, Shinra. Shinra at the beginning. Because they want him to join the evangelists. Right. He ne they need that Adola link or burst. They need the Adola burst to whatever. Yeah. And this goes for like, what, two 
episodes? Two episodes, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fight just, like, the beginning of that second to the last episode is just Shinra just going super fast because not only has he made himself into, like, a jet engine, he can, like, go so fast that he his particles travel through time and appear on another it's place like, Light space. speed that he's so fast that he reverses time for himself. It's or some shit. It, it's a uh, what, what's that Spider Man movie where he spins the world in the opposite direction and goes the Superman. 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 I mean, it's yeah. the Superman movie where he spins the world goes back in time. Between nerds, whoa, whoa, I know. My bad. Shit. My bad. My bad. But uh, so yeah, it's like that. It's the sign. Leech tries to explain it through the anime logic science and just like he's moving past the speed of light to the point like you're saying he's no longer part of the universe and like can move back in time and then he's particles reform oh whatever so th that's the thing like when shinra is gonna he's gonna cap he's gonna tap out and like he's about to do the tephrosis or whatever he needs to be careful because if he gets tephrosis while his particles aren't formed then he can't reform and he's just dead yeah and the scientist explains it like in a super convoluted way yeah he just explains everything yeah and then at that point they have another adult link. The right? brothers do. They have. A, he's trying to get into him. Shinra's trying to get into his brother's head and just show him who he is. Like he's my. You're my brother. This is your memories. This is real life. It's not just made up. And then they both wake up from like a very intense youth memory, and then a huge ass sword is through Shinra. <laughs> right, and they both look at each other like, "Oh shit!" Well, it, sh it shows swords. So like, it's almost. Like, um, the evangelist through Sho, like, thrust the sword through him. Because Sho didn't want to hurt uh, Shinra anymore. Mm -hmm. And we knew that Shinra was getting more powerful from the divinity he was getting from Adola Lincoln with Sho. Because Sho is Adola Link to the evangelist and is giving divinity to Sho. So, Shinra is getting leftover divinity, which is making him move so fast. Mm-hmm. That was very confusing, but that's how the anime explains it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, and yeah, like that the shit that you were talking about, Jacob, with like Shinra almost forcing memories into show. Uh, again, remind me like a lot about like the Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker is like, I know there's good in you. Uh, yeah, that's honestly I didn't even think about that, but that's exactly what because we see like the memories of like how the mom had turned into a demon infernal and because she saw the evangelist you can't look at god directly so we get this really fucked up scene of her putting the horns on her head over her eyes is that what it was that's what it was is that what it represented i don't know yeah i was just watching i had no idea what the because fuck was going on because the other white clads at the time were controlling the 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 demon uh that the demon infernal that the mom had turned into are you saying uh, how, for her pulling uh, her horns to her eyes? Yeah, so Haumies explains it. How, H A U M E A. Haumia? Haumia. Ha, whatever. I know what? so, yeah, Haumia is like controlling the demon, but what they literally explain it that like the mom's eyes are burning out by looking at divinity and you can't look at God directly. It's like the biblical interpretation of an angel. You okay. can't look at an angel directly. It's so, a little crazy. Yeah, so she has to put the the horns over her eyes, which is the same reason that Captain Burns of Section 1 has a burnt-out eyeball because he once looked at divinity himself, and now... So the evangelist, that big-ass person behind show, that's... What's the name of it? That's divinity? Yeah, it's the evangelist. Okay, okay. That's the... Well, there was a name for it. I don't, I don't uh, the evangelist, mean, but soul? the divinity he means that's soul, the sun god. Yeah. Soul. Okay, yeah, that big ass white angel person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That I was weird, and they didn't explain it. They're just both confused, like who the hell is this? And he's like, he found me in the fire, some shit like that. Yeah, and that's like the end of the fight. Basically, is that like uh, this? How me a person? Her. She has an adult link too, but all we see from her is that she uses electrical bursts to manipulate people's nervous system, and she can make them do anything. Oh, that's how she, that's how Show stab fucking Shinra because Hamia used uh, her electrical impulse to make Show stab him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, okay, the science is wrong there, and I know I keep picking this apart, but your nervous system is chemical. It is not. Like an electrical input. Yes. So that's wrong. Like. Well, yeah, but. But it's wrong. But you can shock a muscle into going like this. But it's still wrong. 
Yeah, but you can shock. You can shock a muscle into going like this. Oh, and, and so we do get some uh, some comedy there because we get our dumbass Arthur, and he's too stupid to be manipulated. She she can't manipulate Arthur because he's too stupid to fall for her electrical impulses. Um, impulses. So he's trying to fight her for a second, and that's when we get the rest of Section Eight showing up, and she destroys uh, Maki's uh, metal boxing glove things. Uh, she beats up Pamaki. She's destroying the captain's armor, and because she's trying to steal Shinra and take him back because of his Adolaverse, and the Evangelist needs him. Because her little bit of exposition right there is that she's the one that manipulated the mom's infernal demon, and the Evangelist needs like a certain number of Adola links to make the end of the world because Earth needs to be fire to give to the sun god or something. So I guess the main, and we haven't even talked about this, the main motive or motivation for like the white plot and like this crusade people is that like they don't want to deal with fire. Like fire was supposed to come here to like, like end everything. Mm -hmm. And because the world got a second chance of like rebirthing or relive, like they're mad at that and they just want to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. So they believe that something happened that shouldn't have happened so they're trying to bring it back to the original form that should have been the original form yeah right? which is just everybody being dead by fire. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So they're trying to have the Abdullah uh, burst that is in the power plant, the Abdullah door, uh, Abdullah burst in show, and the Abdullah burst in Shinra to make this super explosion. Maybe I, I think she says they need a certain number, and if you notice on their clothing, it's like a half sun with like twelve points. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe they say in season two that like they're like the main goal is to get twelve Abdullah bursts together to make the end of the world or something. Something. I, I'm assuming at a certain point that's what it's going to turn into. It's going to turn into a flat out number of being like, yeah, we need th yeah. this number of Abdullah bursts to make it happen. And uh, all the different eyes, I like eye styles in like e almost everybody, not, a, not but not everybody. It reminded me of like Demon Slayer too. Like with uh, the, yeah. you know, like the, with the different section of the devils. The, they're uh, the. Every every person with a power has like an eye design that's directly correlated to their powers. So like but arrow has really. a literal arrow. It's a blue arrow. Captain Hibana's is flowers because she has a flower power. The star lieutenant from section one has literal stars in his eyes. And so I and I guess the metaphor there when it comes to the white clads as well is that like they all cover their eyes. So you again can't see their powers. And that's them not looking directly at Soul, which is the same thing. Oh, okay. That's the whole thing? Okay, that makes sense. Right. So then the last episode of the anime is all exposition because Shinra's in the hospital. He gets healed by section, like, six. I, I don't remember the mm -hmm. section. Yeah, section six, who... Is like a cult medicine company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a hospital as opposed to a fire department. They explain it, but... They explain it's it, exactly but like, what it is. yeah, they, they they're basically just telling you don't think about it. And, and <laughs> don't worry about it. Just keep going. And the captain's power is a flame snake that can use somebody's like fire powers within themselves to like heal them from the outside. So like more just anime logic. And then so the like very last scene is uh, Captain Burns like pulls Shinra out of his hospital bed and is like, hey, come duel me outside. No, no, no. He's like. Hey man, I have some information for you. Come outside and talk to me. And then at at that point, he's like, "All right, but you gotta fight me for it." Yeah, this guy the that fuck? the guy that's been unconscious for like three days. He's like, "Yeah, you gotta fight me now." And uh, that's it. It's just all exposition. It's just Doctor Burns being like, "Yeah, your mom turned into a demon infernal, which ran away with your brother, and I couldn't stop them because it was tied to the soul god because it reacted with my eye." And that's it. That's end of the anime. Yeah. End, end of season one. End of season one. One thing that I did was super funny at the very beginning. This doesn't have to do with the real story. Little side notes is their mascots. Like their fire mascots were dogs. Like two different dogs. Mm -hmm. And one of them was an old man that looked like a dog. I thought that was hilarious, man. And then out of nowhere, they would just show up at the beginning of the episode just hanging out with no dialogue at all. Just... Looking at him, it was weird. Lat home. That what they're called? That's what they're called, or that's no, 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 no. That's their that's their amen. Okay. So man. you see okay. them just like okay. half cooking a meal, like super shittily, and like burning themselves, and then by the time they're finally eating, they're just like lat home. Mm -hmm. 
And I like I liked it. I had a fun time watching it. I had an even more like any an even more fun time watching it because I knew Jacob was watching it. Uh huh. And you know he's a firefighter. He's new to anime, so I don't know all this. All this like he's not a firefighter. He's a local East Side fire person. Ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, local East Side fire person. <laughs> but yeah. I'll- I mean, I'm definitely going to continue it. I don't know how many seasons there is, but I know there's a second season. I don't know if Season two, like, just ended. There's okay. not a dub for it, though. Okay. Well, so you would have to watch it subbed. Oh. Well, you I'll can... let you guys dub it for me. <laughs> well, just wait a year. No, I, know, dub it. I mean, I'll definitely continue watching it. Like, it got my attention. It's. I want to finish the story. Um, so. I tried watching the beginning of season two. I couldn't get into it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, more out-of-context fan service and, like... and. Last year when this came out, I had finished it, and before we started this week, I was like, I don't remember the second half of it, because, like, it, I, I was just so turned off by the change in tone and change in pacing that, like, it just turned me off to the rest of the season. So, first season's better than the second season right now? I, I haven't watched the second season, is what I'm saying. Oh. I'm saying the first time I saw the first season, I... I I, I came out of it salty because I was upset about the change in tone. Got you. With the hardcore music. <laughs> yeah, it just like the pacing and it just seemed like just really rushed. Just the director being like, okay, I was told we have to finish X points by X amount of time. We've only got 10 episodes. Let's go. Okay, so are you done with it completely? No. I've only seen the first episode of season two. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I would watch it if you guys want to... If you guys want us to talk about it, we'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll definitely bring it up next time. If we got feedback from, like, our audience on Twitter, like, at, at Between Nerds, or if somebody were to email us to watch season two of Fire Force at Between Nerds at gmail.com, like, I'd be open to, to, watch it. to watching it again after January, because we have all January planned Did you? Out. So you liked it? Um, Would you give it a rating? Can you give it a number rating between oh, one to ten? Not really, because oh, I never see the seen only one. Seen. <laughs> but from Totoro to that, I would give it a solid two Totoros. Two Totoros. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. I mean, I don't know how many Totoros. It My neighbor Totoro is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Neighbor Totoro is pretty good. And no, it, it was a good anime. I think the fight scenes and I had some really good headphones too. I, I kept telling all of that, um, so I got to listen to it on my headphones. And the sound quality of this anime was awesome. I think the fight scenes and the sound quality was great. And that just brought me more in depth into it. Like, I really focused and zoned out into it. I think, for me, the more I watch it, it's just uh, the inconsistencies in animation. And the issue there is because they 2D animated fire, which in itself is hard. Like, a lot of anime, even like Demon Slayer and stuff like that, will 3D animate fire to save on both, like, time and, like... Uh, just payment. Yeah, on payment to individual am- animators to animate 2D fire. But the whole anime being composed of 2D fire, it's a lot of sakuga. Sakuga is like the Japanese term for like freeform animation. So when we see those big explosions, it's all sakuga because it's just the artist just doing like just do big crazy strokes. Go for it, like fuck it. Mm. But that takes a lot of time in and of itself because within each frame they're doing like a lot, right? But they also had 3D smoke. Two. I don't know. Yeah. About the, fire. the 3D yeah, smoke was cool, yeah, yeah. but I, I never saw 3D fire. That's what I'm saying. Right on that. Like the smoke was, there was a lot of 3D smoke. There was also no 3D fire. Overall, did you, I mean, since you watch a lot of anime, did you like the animation? Um. Or they fell off too the, much. The character designs remind me too much of Soul Eater. Like, he should have just continued Soul Eater if he wanted to continue these designs for me. But Beca- what, I mean, he got paid for it, you know? Like, I liked it. It's, uh, it's like, nice. I, I read it at the beginning. It's like a high C, low B. Okay. Like, it's not awful. I think mm-hmm. it's a great starting point for anybody because it's not like... It's it's not super weird to the point that you have to explain things besides fan service. It's not, it's not a must watch. <laughs> it's not a must watch. It's not a must watch. It's not a must watch. Yeah. But at the same time, it kind of is a must watch because it's still ongoing and it's fairly popular. Yeah. But again... What we were talking about, it's because it got picked like it's up. It's a must watch for us. It got picked <laughs> up by Toonami, and that's what's making it popular in American audiences. Do like, you like that as a purist or whatever you want to call yourself? <laughs> Let me say it like that. Would you, do you like that Toonami does stuff like that, or any company, I guess, inherits them and makes them Americanized ish? Or you think that's. 
what? Most of the you time, feel... I think it's a negative. Okay, because, mo- like, most of the time. Because, like, negative. really, really good enemy. Like, the best enemy, like, we've seen are not popular in the U.S. because they were not picked up by Adult Swim or Tunano. But you think it, it takes away a lot from the actual, an- or the whole itself? Like, I think I, if it never was dubbed, you think it would be better or the same? No, I, I think it's an asset. Okay. Because it is showing people, like, a, a half-decent anime. You get what I mean? Like, okay. slightly above average anime. But if you're, like, super deep into anime, you're gonna hate you it. think you hate if they dub it. Or a Tsunami no. adapts it. Like, it's but, just... The dub doesn't even matter. Like, if you have a good dub, okay, whatever. But it, it, when you have, like, super annoying character voice actors for the dub, like, I prefer oh, watching yeah, the sweet. Japanese. I prefer watching the Japanese. But it doesn't matter if you watch dub. It doesn't matter if you watch, like, uh, sub. It's yeah. just more Americanized. You're just like, oh, yeah. you guys aren't even about it. Why and some of the language this? is not even the same. Yeah, there's a lot of mistra- Well, there's a lot of things they couldn't translate in the dub. Like, there's strictly... Especially with Arthur, because he confuses Japanese words that sound the same. Like, you'll see on the subtitles up top being like, oh, he actually means this. Because we're missing that Japanese context. That the words are similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's whatever also. It's just, I don't hate when studios do high profile dubs. I just hate that that's all people see. Because people are really lazy, you know what I mean? So it's just like... Well, I used to watch Dragon Ball Z on Toonami as a kid, so I trust Toonami's anime taste, so I'm just going to watch whatever the fuck's coming out on Toonami. So, Aldo and you rate fight scenes. What do you think the fight scenes are? I think the fight scenes are awesome. Um, I think they're good, but I don't think they're enough. Because like, lengthy, or you want continue, like every episode you want a cool fight scene? Okay, so I would compare it to when we watch Akame Ga Kill. Mm-hmm. Akame Got Kill is really, really mid. Like, super, super average and just, like, it's like Fire Force just mid, just average. But what makes Akame Got Kill above Fire Force for me is at the end of every episode, I'm getting a top-tier fight scene. But then, but then again, the way Fire Force is trying to tell a story, it doesn't... It doesn't build up to that. It doesn't build up for every episode. Yeah, for every episode. Scene. Yeah. Okay. Because it's more about getting a team together. Mm-hmm. You know, and why are you going to be fighting your teammates all the time? It doesn't even explain yeah. that till halfway through the anime, though. <laughs> yeah. That's my yeah. thing. It doesn't even explain that to halfway through the anime. It's just like the, the thing we were supposed to be trying to accomplish the whole season was getting the team together. We forgot, guys. Sorry. So, we're yeah, gonna- I, I honestly think I'm right there with you, man. As soon as they. Aldo told me about it, too. He's all. Yo, man, if you like the intro song, it's going to get weird in a couple more episodes. I'm like, okay, I guess. And then out of nowhere, I saw it. And I definitely saw a change of pace and everything, like exactly how we explained. But I try to stop that. Just because the music was different, I was like, no, no, let's see if it's different. The next episode, I just pretended it wasn't there. And I did still see a difference. Like, I couldn't look past the difference. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was strange. It's okay. Watch it. So, well, yeah. Watch it if you have the time. Yeah, I, I, I want to watch it because I need to finish the story. I'm halfway through the story. I need to finish it. There's at least 15 other full-length animes that we've already talked about as part of this podcast that I think people that maybe not intro level like you, but like moderately interested. Like you've seen three, four high-profile animes. You know what I mean? You saw Naruto and Dragon Ball as a kid. You know the plot to One Piece, whatever, whatever. There's like... 15 other anime that I would suggest to you before you get to Fire Force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cowboy not being one of them, but uh, yeah. You got was- shit on that. <laughs> shit on that one. That was Fire Force, guys. Um, shit. Are we going to the Nerd Down? Nerd Down? Nerd Down. Nerd Down. Hey guys, this is the Nerd Down. Um, so I just wanted to give a big thank you to all listeners across all platforms in all countries because we got our analytic numbers back from December and we were at 332 downloads for the month of December. And I think that's really fucking cool. I think that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's not as high as October with 348 total downloads for the month. I tried to get us up there. We were like 20 away, but... Whatever. I, I, I guess Jan- get busy. I guess January just needs to be that much better. It's just it's better than our November numbers because November was pretty ass. I don't know what happened, um, but I, I mean we had a shitty mic. Yeah, we had a shitty. Mi- well, October we saw the shitty mic. That's the thing. And, and then uh, I'm sorry, we talked about this. Um, 
somehow we want to revisit our early episodes, but we don't want to revisit our early episodes? I don't know how to treat it because, for example, um, Darling in the Franks episode 11 is about to overtake our first number episode, episode 1, Bakumonogatari, as our most downloaded episode. And, like... Darling the Franks has the ass quality mic, right? Like, it's bad. Like, it's bad, bad. Like, I, I, I cringe so bad I can't even finish it half the time. But Darling in the Franks is also, like, one of our funniest episodes besides maybe Domestic Girlfriend. And I think that's why it has so many downloads and has that many, like, revisits. And I'm not sure if we re-download it, if we tried to record again, that we could, like, reproduce that. Yeah, we wouldn't. I, I don't think we would. We wouldn't be able. But maybe we can make like an extra. How many did you go through the no, full? We can. Yeah, full we like finished. seasons, all seasons. Yeah. We finished it. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I don't think sorry, so. I, I don't think we I can. I don't think we can. But please, if you're a new listener or an old listener, if you just only started listening to the new episodes because of my quality or take my it. voice <laughs> or, or, or Jacob <laughs> Uh, go back to uh, to uh, to listen to. I mean, my favorite episode is Madoka's. My other favorite episode is Darling in the Franks. Uh, domestic Gruff, uh, Domestic Girlfriend was pretty funny. You know, I think Madoka of- Magica is like our best. Uh, Berserk is fairly popular. The one with the Attack on Titan with the girls is like for whatever reason it just skyrocketed right away. That was in the good mic though. Yeah, that was on the good mic. It's just Hunter Hunter is good too, and and Fire and uh, no Fire Force. Um, the cooking one. Shoku Geki no Soma is using the old mic, and that one's fairly popular too. Mm-hmm. Um, but just keep giving us feedback. Like, tell us what you think. Like, should we revisit Darling in the Franks? Do you want what else? Do you want us to watch? We still haven't watched uh, Kill a Kill. We still haven't watched Gurren Lagann. We still haven't watched any of the Fate Zero series, which is stupidly popular. And But we're not watching those this month, guys. Guess what? Because we have all the entire month of January planned out. Today was our first episode of January, the first episode of 2021. Hopefully everything starts getting better. We had Jacob Mandeville, our local fire person, in the house. And... I'm glad you like the brother. I'm glad you're interested in watching the second season. And by all means, watch it. I haven't watched it. I can't tell you if, if it's good or not. But, you know, keep watching. And I'm glad that you saw what anime is and how it is constructed. It's straight just titties. That's all <laughs> I know how to say. No, it has a really good story to it, for sure. We don't want you to think that, like, you're secluded to, like, this episode. Like, if you hear us talking about something coming up and you're like... Oh, I've heard the guys talk about this. I should try to jump on that episode. You know, just watch with us. Hit us up, bro. Like, I don't care. If you liked Fire Force enough that you're interested in Soul Eater because it's the same author, like, just hit us up. And in two weeks, we'll have you and Valentin here to talk about Soul Eater. I don't know. Well, I don't know what your schedule is, so don't commit to that now. Don't know either. Don't commit to that now. I'm down to, like, try to start getting into more episodes when possible, Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I'm definitely down. I have more time on my hands, so for sure I'm down. I, I think the way you appreciate the storytelling is the same way I also appreciate a lot of like storytelling through shows and stuff like that. Because me and V are always looking for something new to watch. I'm always looking for a new movie to watch. And because you're barely pretty intro, just barely introduced to anime, there's a lot of things you can watch. If, you, if you're looking for a cool something to watch like quick... I think more there. art-oriented, like more anime the better anime like animation drawn would be i would, I would be more and there's different styles because you can't rank it as good or bad you get me right 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 but i i get what you're saying just a different a style that i can find that i like mm-hmm. and then from there i can like my neighbor totoro like a lot of like no i i think that because i watched it when i was like super little no but that's playing around, but, but that's really studio yeah, that's, that's studio studio ghibli that director uh, Miyazaki is like the that's, that's like the Disney of fucking anime. Like everything he's ever made is like top tier animation. So there's like ten different movies by that one studio that you'd probably enjoy. Shinke as well. Yeah, Makoto Shinke too. He but but his stories are more romantic. But the animation, like the whole storytelling, and their movies more than than see than series. And, and they look amazing, dude. There's one high-profile Makoto Shinkei movie that we haven't watched either. And it'd be easier for you to watch because you just sit down for an hour and a half as opposed to watching 24 episodes. But whatever. Uh, we'll put that in the back burner. Next week, for the second episode of the month of January of 2021, we are going to have Christopher James back in here. And we are going to be talking about One Piece. 
who you may know from the the uh, the old Lloyd episodes, the archive files. CJ was a part of it, talking about One Piece. We've had CJ on here talking about our take on uh, Cowboy Bebop. So we're excited to have him back. This one's gonna cover is gonna encompass a lot of information because it's the first forty episodes of One Piece. Even though I previously said there's like nine hundred eighty episodes of One Piece, we're only gonna be talking about the first forty, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like a lot but 40 episodes is a lot to watch especially for somebody like Aldo who has no context to One Piece yeah never watched it I'm I'm on episode 30 right now yeah like Aldo just knows that it's popular and has been going on for forever but mm-hmm. well before these first 30 episodes yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're excited, excited to have CJ here uh, it's like I hit CJ up every week to ask uh, questions chapter 1000 officially came out today I watched I read the shit out of that again because I read the leaks, too. So, like, I already knew what happened, like, a week ago. But it's still dope. We're going to try to do a no-spoiler kind of discussion. And I know CJ's ecstatic, so we'll be talking about that for a minute. Uh, we're going to have Valentin Hernandez Jr., who was here for our uh, our Agretsuko episode. And he's going to be talking about Soul Eater with us because he pushed for that for, like, three weeks in October. And he's like, oh, thank you for volunteering me. I'm like, dude, you've been wanting to watch this. Come on. <laughs> well, we like having Valentin here, too. He's a good time. The yeah. only thing is we need to keep him away from the sauce this time to keep his energy up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Last time it was, a little, it was a little sleepy talk. He was a little sleepy. And then uh, week four, uh, we're going to have Karen and VNA back to talk about... Uh, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, um, Spirited Away. Spirited Away, yes. The Studio Ghibli. Yeah, and another Studio Ghibli movie we're talking um, about, Ghibli. Spirited Away. And then, uh, because this episode comes out so early in January, we had enough time to record a fifth episode for the month of January. And me and Alder are going to be watching the first season of Beastars. And the thing about Beastars is it's part... No, well, it's part of the Netflix lineup. So season one of Beastars might come out during the same month in January, so we might have a couple episodes of uh, season two to maybe also consider, but as for, as of right now, it's just season one of Beastars. Yeah, yeah, and if you thought a uh, regular uh, human fan service was awkward enough... Oh, wait till it's like uh, bunnies. Wait till it's like... <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm, yo, I'm out on that. One. <laughs> so thanks for the invite, it, it, but I'm out on that it, one. It's like uh, it, it's it's. Have you ever seen Zootopia? No, I haven't. So you guys are talking about it. It's like no, that, but kind of more horny. Uh. <laughs> no. and, it, and it's three and it's three D animation. It's not even two D animation. So cool. it's like I'm still out on that. Uh, but thank uh, you for the invite. <laughs> Oh man, a uh, great episode. I think we have a winner to to announce for the last. Um, the last hashtag we did was was uh, nerds for the homeless. Uh, we are gonna donate uh, some donation to the coalition of the homeless because we have some little, you know, feedback. Feedback yeah, we, on not it. Not that many people actually participated in the hashtag. Uh huh. And not only that, we only had like two entries. So congratulations to Dominic Rodriguez, Dommy, uh, Tommy. He he. So he's gonna win our giveaway from last month, and we'll hit him up to come scoop that up. Yes, sir. And um, oh, you guys know that. Well, if you guys have been paying attention, we regularly post our donations. But last last month's donations to candlelighters, their donation link and procedure only uh, like leaves us like at our error page. So we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna have to email them to directly. Like, where did we drop off the check, bro? Like, yeah, we're gonna do something like that. Uh, this uh, next uh, this next donation we're gonna make shortly hopefully with uh, well I already donated my clothes I don't know if you took your clothes did you take your clothes I, I gave it to like family members that needed it okay cool that, that makes sense and um, I don't forget to use this month's hashtag which is hashtag EP Fire Nerds to, uh, to support the El Paso Fire Department thank you to Kirby Curbs with four eyes on Twitter for already uh, using the hashtag for already using the hashtag so that's dope um, fuck what am I forgetting uh, big shout out to you, Kirby. Thank you for listening. I we hope you're listening. Shout out to anybody playing on a PS5. Hit me up, Drushi Bag. We can fail at Apex with Aldo. Yeah, we're ba- we're we're pretty bad. I only got into Apex to play to spend some time with Lloyd, but he never played good with me. Well, me and you have been trying to play, and we're we're like we're actively trying, and we're still not good. That's the issue. But I mean, actively actively trying it's like it's been like four days like for a couple of hours but still like it's a it's us just yelling at each other and we still don't get anywhere we're just 
picking up equipment for whoever kills us to get. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, last night was Saturday night, I didn't do anything, I started playing Persona 5 and Fallout 4, which are games that I've been meaning to play for the past, like, five years, so I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And? Do you have anything else? What am I missing? Do you have anything else, Mr. Jacob? Anything else? I mean, you got your car started the other day. I got my 240SX S14 cranked over, so, yes, yeah, man. that's that's a fun project that I'm working on, so... Are you going? Okay. Are you going into any uh, races soon? Uh, next season starts up. Yeah, soon. Um, street bike racing, and I got my dirt bike. That's I don't know if I'm going to race that yet this season, but yeah, street bike racing starts in January, February. Wait, I have yeah. a question. As part of like uh, a public, like first responder kind of thing, like uh-huh. have you been vaccinated yet? Um, we had the option to. You chose not to. Oh, you don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to, but we, we, we got the first pick, okay. I guess you could say. And you opted against it? I did, yes. Okay. I want to encourage anybody else that's like has the, the opportunity to the opportunity to do it to just do it. Like Yeah, I mean hey, that's everybody's options. That's yeah. just my option right uh-huh. now. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. So hopefully everybody gets vaccinated soon so we can start doing more cool stuff with a podcast. Shout out to Oscar Leeser for starting his mayoral ship on Tuesday. If anybody, it, 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 on the off chance anybody hears this tomorrow on Monday and you live in Georgia, don't forget to vote on Tuesday for the special elections for the Georgia Senate seats. We need those. Because I, I don't like Kelly Leffler or David Perdue very much. Because didn't she like campaign with a Klansman? Kelly Leffler campaigned with a Ku Klux Klansman. Okay. Kelly, right? Leffler. Leffler? Kelly Leffler. Kelly Leffler. She campaigned with a Ku- with a former Ku Klux Klan member or something like that? There's, there's evidence that he's currently tied to the KKK. Oh, okay. So whatever. Um, and it's just... Fuck. I don't want to get political, but I do. But I, just, like, I just wanted to say it three times. Just like the Fox segment. <laughs> that, shit, that, that shit was awesome. How are they going to pick on uh, John Ossoff like that? And then he just like shits on them like on live television. I hope it, I hope it was live fucking television. I think it was live because... Then, no, no, like, no, no. It was, but like... Like, I, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm grateful that it was fucking live television, you know, and they didn't get a chance to edit shit. Mm-hmm. But that's all we got. My name's Drew Elias. My name's Aldo Mendes. Our guest, Jacob Mendedo. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for <laughs> listening. This has been Between Nerds. This has been Between Nerds.